these images are real. This is not make-believe. Of the Circuit de la Sarthe in France. You too can Roll. witness the myth. Join us for the 24-hour Le Mans weekend on June 13 and 14, 2020. Take advantage of our early offer until January 31st on ticket.lemans.org. Hello and welcome to Le Mans Esports here at Autosport International. We are moments away from the race starting. We have 12 pro teams competing for two hours at the Le Mans circuit. Each team has three drivers, so you will be seeing a driver change just like you would in real racing. And remember, this is a standalone event. So the winner from this will be going straight through to the Super Final at Le Mans in June. Now, all that's left for me is to pass over to our commentators, Chris and Harry. Thank you very much, Louise. Yes, here we are. This is the Le Mans Esports uh, Teams Invitational. When we get to the Super Final, which will be at the Le Mans 24 hour in June, we're gonna have nine pro teams taking part and nine pro-am teams taking part. Now this, of course, Harry, uh, has to do with those pro teams where we have the first team go through. 12 of the best teams in the business, it's fair to say, some fantastic drivers here as well. One prize at the end, winner takes all, it's gonna be good. Yeah, we're gonna end up with, unfortunately, 11 disappointed teams and drivers, but one very happy team and driver. It'll be a weight off their shoulders to know they're already booked into that final later this year, while the other teams have still got to work hard for it. Well, it's only the second season, so I'm sure many of you uh, may not have crossed paths with the Le Mans Esports Series yet, particularly those of you uh, at the Autosport Show as well, and uh, welcome uh, if you're joining us here at Hall Number 1. We're just going to go through a little bit of an explainer of where we currently are uh, in the road to the Super Final. So we do have a Pro Series which is taking place where the top six teams will go through. We had the first event back in November. This Invitational will see the first of the nine Pro teams go through. Uh, we have the second event of that championship uh, where the top six go through in February uh, and then we will have uh, three more events uh, after that. The top six will go through which will give us seven teams uh, with uh, one team of course going through here and then we'll have two wild cards which will give us uh, nine teams uh, overall at the super final uh, where they will race uh, over 24 hours split into segment of races of course and they'll be fighting it out for a $200,000 prize pool. However they will be joined by nine pro-am teams as well. Uh, Nine AM drivers included in that, and three of those will qualify right here uh, at the Autosport Show uh, this weekend, just in front of us where people can go and set a time for free, and the top three go through. Yeah, it's a great way to get people included. You know, come to an event like this, you get to watch these guys on stage do what they do, all the fantastic cars and scenery we've got around here, and also you've got the competition running just in front of us here to make sure that they might be able to come and feature into the Le Mans Super Final alongside these guys they see on stage in front of them. Well, we couldn't be doing this without some fantastic equipment. I'm sure those of you are looking at the rigs and thing. I want one of those at my house uh, and Thrustmaster who have uh, been helping us with the wheels and the pedals. They're going to be uh, supplying a deal so you can see you can get 10% uh, off uh, that set you can see on your screens at the moment and it runs until the 14th of January so you can get 10% off at box.co.uk with the code TMA uh, U2010 uh, uh, so that is the code uh, you can use uh, go and check it out you've only got until the 14th of January to do that if you're watching this and think I want to get involved in esports like I'm sure many of you are you can get started with that promotion as well now uh, let's go through and have a look uh, at where all the teams are we're going to start uh, down the bottom so we've got BHK uh, in pod number one next to them will be Radicals. Radicals starting uh, in 8th place, BHK in 12th, then it's Lightspeed uh, Esports. But we're going to have a look at pod number four. So that is, uh, if you're here in the arena, uh, with pod number one is 
to your left, pod number four is where Jota are. Now, Jota have qualified uh, in fourth place, so they're going to be on the second row. And next to them is uh, Ford Zilla, uh, who are going to be in ninth. Uh, and then we have uh, Williams behind that. But Jota, very good performance from them. Yeah, I mean, qualifying that we had just before this race was very close. The top four separated by two tenths. Unfortunately, Jota are in that fourth place, so they were less than two tenths away from the front row, which I'm sure they'll be gutted about. But it's all to fight for. You know, they've got a very strong lineup here, a very fast driver to start the race with as well. So I'm sure they'll be looking to try and clear the three in front of them and go into the distance and see them at the finish line, hopefully. Yeah, Sean Arnold uh, in the rig for them. L looks, a bit like, <laughs> looks a bit like a bodybuilder, uh, but uh, he is a very quick driver as well. Uh, as uh, we then move to the end, we have uh, Veloci, uh, who are in uh, pod number six. Uh, Veloci, a very good qualifying for them. They are third. They're actually our reigning champions of the Le Mans eSports series. They took the win uh, at the 24-hour race last year, so they were the first ever champions uh, of the series. Uh, then we're going to go to Harry's left, so further down to your right of the commentator stand uh, in pod number seven uh, we have Williams Esports they are going to be our pole sitters for this two hour endurance race uh, next to them is the Jean Alesi uh, Esports Academy uh, Jean Alesi Esports Academy very good qualifying for them they line up on the outside of row number one next to them is Lazarus uh, Lazarus a pretty decent qualifying for them uh, as well they qualified in fifth place VP Gaming are alongside them. Uh, they're going to start in seventh place for this one. Uh, then uh, alongside that, we have Team Highlands Racing. Uh, Team Highlands Racing will start in tenth place. Uh, and then uh, towards the very back, we have uh, Team FGTR, who qualified uh, 11th place. Now, we have the Pro Team Series, which is currently taking place. As we said, the top six are going through from that. But some teams are not in that Pro Team Series, so this is literally their only chance to qualify. The likes of Team FGTR, uh, Williams, Veloci being those. Yeah, you know, all their eggs in one basket, so to speak. You know, they're putting all their, you know, all their hope and dreams into this event. And they've all got very good chances. They're all very good teams, so there's no reason why they can't do it. They just need that little bit of lady luck on their side to say it's one event, a two-hour race. If something goes wrong, that's the end of your chances. It's not like a championship where you've got multiple rounds to try and claw back any time you might have lost or points you might have lost. It's a one-off race. Winner takes all, as you said earlier. So I'm excited to see how they get on. Well, of course, the as the grid is, isn't how they line up in the rig. So let's get the grid up for you so uh, we can just remind you of uh, who is starting where. And as we said, it was a very close qualifying session. Uh, Williams took pole position. There was only just over a tenth between the top four teams, four tenths between the top five teams. John Alacy Esports Academy uh, are going to be on the outside of row number one. Uh, and then on row number two, it will be Veloci and Jota. So James Baldwin in for Veloci, Sean Arnold in for Jota. Then we skip to row number three, which is going to be Lazarus GT. Lewis Bentley will start for them. And then we have Mariano Okana uh, in for Lightspeed Esports. Uh, on row number four, it is going to be vpgaming.de with Johan Ackerman. Uh, and Adam Tierney will be in the seat for Radicals Online, who start in eighth place. Fordzilla uh, with Perpy are going to be on ninth place with Team Highlands. Darren King in for them for the first in in tenth place. And then on the back row, Team FGTR, Chris Chadwick and Dario Vallelunga. It is going to be a two-hour race, three drivers for each team. They have to do at least half an hour each. We talked about tactics in qualifying early. We didn't stream that live. So let's pick back up on that uh, again. What do you think tactics-wise? So we've got a two-hour race where there's three drivers, so they'll have to do at least half an hour each. That's mandatory in the rules. So they'll be looking to see if they've got maybe a faster driver, a more consistent driver over a period of time to maybe chuck in for a longer period of time. They'll eat up maybe half the race potentially, you know, an hour in, and then they'll make some pit stops. If they're starting near the front, they might want to you know, try and bolt out the gate as quickly as they can, put their fast drivers in. If you're at the back, you might be you know, trying to stay out of harm's way and wait for the field spread to happen and then put your fast drivers in and catch up those places towards the end if you can. I believe we're almost ready to go. We're going to be uh, in the Ford GT40 Mark II, uh, the 66 model of that. Uh, and we're going to be racing uh, on the Circuit de la Saf, the old version as well. So no Molsan chicanes. We're going to be going flat out all the way down the Molsan straight, all the way 
down to Molsan Corner. So that's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of slipstreaming on that first lap. It could be crucial if one of the teams like Williams can break away through the first few corners. They could be gone into the distance. That's what they'll be hoping for. They'll be hoping for a bit of you know, carnage behind them into the first like, heavy braking zone, which is essentially turn two. Um, you know, it tends to get a bit clustered in there with you know, so many cars in close proximity. If someone can get the brake, they're going to be very difficult to catch because you can lose so much time battling on this circuit. You know, the cars are, are very soft and you know, they move around a lot under braking and acceleration. So if you're having to try and fight side by side with someone and someone ahead of you has got clear air, you're going to struggle to keep up with them. It will be indeed, and I believe we are about to get underway, and indeed we are. So through Dunlop Chicane, uh, we go. We pick up the action then as we go underneath the uh, Dunlop Bridge. Uh, we're with uh, ninth place at the moment. We can see light speed ahead of us. It's BHK, I believe, we were on board with. It doesn't look like anyone has do dropped too far away. As I say, that one team has sadly dropped off the pack, and it's Jota. So Jota, who started in fourth place, one of the favourites for this event, they have dropped off the back, and the Jean Alesi uh, Esports Academy have taken the lead but now down the Molsan straight we go out of Tetch Rouge we go on board with the Jean Alesi Esports Academy and they are being harassed at the moment it seems by uh, Veloci in fact who have retaken the lead Williams are now in second place Lazarus in fourth place all very close together as we get into the slipstream Harry yeah, crazy start. No, unfortunately, we missed just the start of it, but it looks like JC Jota dropping to the back. I don't know if they had contact or maybe lost the car um, coming off one of the corners. It'll be interesting to look if they've got damage, and that might you know, hamper them for the rest of the race, which is a disaster for the next two hours. Yeah, well, we're just going on board with third place at the moment, which is the Jean Alesi uh, Esports uh, Academy team. I hope everyone in the uh, Autosport show here at Hall Number 1 is settled in for this one. Uh, if you have just joined us and you missed the start of the race, don't worry, because we're going to do a race restart. So uh, due to some uh, issues uh, backstage, we are going to do a uh, full race restart. So, uh, well, that gives us a time to have a little bit of a breather. For those of you who are near the motorsport game stage, get your way over here, because we are about to go racing for two hours. Well, Harry, of course, that was a dress rehearsal, if you like, and uh, I think uh, Jota will be happy with that. But what are you expecting? We had a little bit of a taste of what could happen on the opening lap. What are you expecting from the restart? It's not ideal for these guys you know, to jump into the zone and then have to you know, come back out of it and then go back straight in again for a restart. But it, what, had, what it has given them is the chance of before this race, they've jumped into the rig and the first bit of you know, wheel turning and you know, pedal pushing they've done is the start of the race. Now they've got a bit of experience. They can take that into the next, you know, the restart essentially, and maybe do things a little bit differently. They've probably seen what kind of tactics other teams might be looking at for the first few corners, learn from that, maybe adjust their styles if they want to. Um, but again, they get a redo, so Jota will be the happiest out of that lot. Well, let's uh, join with the restart then. I'm sure we're going to be with that very, very shortly. Williams, John Alacy is the front row. Veloce, Jota, row two. Lazarus, Lightspeed. Then it's VP Gaming, Radicals, Fordzilla, Team Highland, and then FGTR and BHK. That is how uh, the 12 teams uh, line up. And very shortly, we are going to join the action and they'll be going racing. Don't forget, only one team will qualify for the Le Mans Esports Super Final out of this. So it is a winner-takes-all season situation uh, and that means the approach to the race there's two ways you can go about it you can just give it everything uh, or you can try and be a little bit patient and a little bit sensible over the two hours and uh, try and get in there at the end of the race yeah I mean it's impossible to say at this point of you know whether it's going to be worth going for it you no know, hard at the start and then try and gain all those positions early on while the field is packed closely together or play the long game see yourself through maybe the first half an hour make sure you keep your car clean make sure you don't get any damage and then look to push on later in the race it's so difficult I know, for them to decide, but we'll see when the race unfolds. Yeah, I believe uh, we're just going to take a very quick breather, but uh, when we come back, we'll uh, join the racing. are real. This is not make-believe. You too can oh. witness the myth. Join us for the 24-hour Le Mans weekend on June 13 and 14, 2020. 
Take advantage of our early offer until January 31st on ticket.lemar.org. Well, Harry, we're going to be getting on the way very shortly, just uh, getting one or two things sorted out uh, here on stage. But I think while that's happening, we, we do have a, a good chance to speak about uh, what else is going on this weekend and how other people can qualify for the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final. Because the situation with this is we are, have nine pro teams that are going to race in the Super Final and nine pro am teams. Now, uh, the pro teams who can qualify, they've already kind of been decided and put into a championship or they've been invited here to uh, get it out for a one uh, shootout and that is uh, Team Highlands racing you could see there Darren King on screen but if you're at the Autosport show today or tomorrow you can qualify for the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final uh, via the activation area you can go on the rigs we have set up there set a time and if you're in the top three at the end of the weekend then you qualify straight through to the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final to race in one of nine Pro-Am teams. Absolutely, yeah. so I, I keep, I've said before that I like the idea that that's here because it's a case of, it's not just those who think I've got a good chance now, I could set a really fast time, I can get myself to the Super Final and be a part of the Super Final in their team. But you know, with the venue that we're at, it gives people a great opportunity to come along and just you know, try maybe sim racing for the first time, see if they get you know, a bit of a liking for it, and there might be you know, a, a, a kickstart to a future for them where they think, yeah, that, no, that might become a new hobby. You know, it's an opportunity to do it if you've not got the equipment at home, you have that chance to do it here. And hopefully there'll be a few people come away from this event thinking, I'm going to start trying and see if I can get on the stage with these guys next year. Yeah, so the nine Pro-Am teams will be made of uh, 18 uh, drivers who have qualified via Forza Motorsport 7 via the Rivals events. And one of those is currently going on at the moment, and it will be going on until the 19th of January. We've had two Rivals events uh, so far. They go on for nine days, and you can set as many times as possible. So we've had six drivers of the 18 go through there. Three more will go through uh, by the 19th of January. Uh, but also, after this event, we're going to have three of the nine AM drivers Qualify this weekend uh, via the Motorsport Games activation area. Uh, however, if you're watching somewhere uh, ar else around the world, then uh, at the FIA World Endurance Championship races at Sebring and Spa, that is where the top three at each of those races uh, who uh, go on the rigs and, and set a time will also go through. So there's three different ways to qualify for the very first time in the Le Mans Esports Series. Yeah, opening up doors for qualification is always a good thing. The more doors there are, the better it's going to be. Now, you're going to find a larger you know, pool of drivers that are going to be fighting their way to be the very best. And you know, that's always going to be the best thing. You want the best drivers to be taking part, and the amount of drivers in there, the larger it is, the better it is you know, for them to be able to find those best drivers. So you know, these guys are all here for a reason. They all look very calm, surprisingly, considering what's going on. Doesn't look like they're facing too much. Hopefully they uh, get back in the zone as they enter turn one and two when the race restarts, hopefully soon. Yeah, well, let's find out how our pole sitters are sitting. It is Williams Esport and Louise Becker is with Cuba Brzezinski. Kuma, you're with Williams. Uh, what does this do for your mentality, having to restart the race? Uh, to be honest, I'm quite, quite happy. Uh, first of all, we're not using ghosts, and I'm starting from pole position, so I just hold my track position. 
And secondly, I just got that racing feeling now, so it's a bit easier now, a bit less stress. So it's quite good. The pressure is on for your team because if you don't win here, then that's it for you. Yeah, for sure, but at the same time, it makes it easier. No calculating points or anything. We just need to win and we just focus on that, so it's win or nothing. It's an easy goal then. Yeah, exactly. Only one target. And uh, who do you see as your biggest competitors? Oh, there's quite a few. Veloce is going to be really strong. Uh, Alaisi's team coming here next to me is super fast. Uh, Yota as well. So yeah, quite a quite a good competition here. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're going to have driver changes happening in this race. So how do you divide the time between the three drivers? Uh, we are lucky enough to have three equally fast drivers, pretty much. Uh, so we can do whatever we want. We'll see how it works out with traffic. We've got a set strategy that I'm going to say now, but uh, we're going to be pretty f flexible. All right, thanks very much. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Louise. Right, what we're going to do now, I think it's, uh, well, we've got a little bit of time. We're just going to go through who's actually starting the races for each team. So for those of you uh, here at the show and for those of you watching online, uh, if you're here uh, supporting any teams in particular, you know exactly uh, who's going to be out there. So for BHK uh, Motorsport, uh, if you're here, they are in the pod all the way down uh, to your left. Uh, Dario Vallelunga is going to be starting uh, the race for them. Radicals Online, uh, who didn't get here until this morning, morning uh, Adam Tierney is going to be starting for them so they're on the back foot because they missed hours of practice yesterday uh, Mariano Okana will be ne will be in for Lightspeed Esports Sean Arnold in for Jota Fordzilla in for uh, for Fordzilla it will be Perpy uh, and then we have uh, of course, uh, for Veloce, James Baldwin, Williams, it will be uh, Cuba Brzezinski, who we just heard from. John Lacey Esports, it will be uh, Camille Pulowski. Uh, for Lazarus, it will be Lewis Bentley. And then we will go through the rest once we get back to the race. But we are away and racing for two hours. It's the team's invitational as they go through turn number one. It looks like John Lacey has taken the lead. And that is someone who has gone off into the gravel. I fear that may have been a Jota once again hitting problems and it was. So Jota into the gravel trap through turn number one and they drop all the way to the back. So their chances of getting the win and qualifying straight through to the super final have now diminished. It's going to be a huge task for them to come back from that. But to up to Tetz Rouge, the first 11 teams still very, very close together. The Jean Alessi Esports Academy leading the way at the moment as they go onto the Molsan straight. We're in the four GT40s Mark IIs and we're going to be going all the way down the Molsan with no chicane. So now it's all about getting in the slipstreams and trying to make as many positions as possible. Yeah, striking similarities between the, the fake start we had last time and this yeah. start. Like the same thing. John Lee's Esports team going from second to first within the first three quarters and Jota having potentially the same mistake. It's turn one and two is very difficult in this car. Though. Turn one isn't flat, even though you'd, you'd like it to be. It's one of those where the weight shifts around in the car and then you hit the brakes hard for turn two and the car's still moving around. There's so many cars near you. It's so easy to make a mistake and have contact perhaps and that's why Jota finds us at the back again. But you know, it's race far from over. Two hours still to go and we've got cars side by side down the whole sand. Yeah, that looks like BHK and Radicals going side by side. They're both closing in on Lightspeed. There is BHK, so they're on the outside of oh, Lightspeed Esports at the moment. They're trying to go up into seventh place as we get to the curve in the Molsan straight. And it looks like they have indeed taken that position at the moment. Lightspeed Esports are just ahead. Uh, but they're going to have the inside going into the braking zone and that's going to be uh, some problems for BHK. I don't know what's going on out front. There we have someone off into the gravel. It looks like a team rejoining. Was that the Williams team, I wonder? It looked like their livery that it was rejoining. Veloce have gone up into third place. Team Highlands Racing have come from the back of the field from 10th place all the way up to 4th place. So they're absolutely flying at the moment. Our Team Highlands Racing, the hard charges there up into fourth place so far. They've just kept out of trouble, Harry, and now they find themselves one step away from a top three finish. Yeah, great start by them, and great start by the Lazarus team. Now they're up to second as well with that mistake from Jota ahead of them on the grid and then the Williams team as well. There's something about Lazarus and this track that they oh, seem to like. Big got lunch there, sorry, Harry. Lunges. Team Highlands Racing trying to go up the inside of Veloci, and I think, well, I think they were trying to back out of it more than anything in the end. They got away with it. Veloce stay in third. Team Highlands Racing stay in fourth. This is BHK once again getting on the grass there in the braking zone. Similarities to what Lando Norris did 
when he came and had a go uh, earlier. They avoid the barriers, though, unlike what Lando was able to do, unfortunately. But uh, here we go then, up towards the Porsche curve. BHK are in ninth place. FGTR trying to battle with them in tenth place. Lazarus are up to second. VP Gaming are on the move, and we're looking at them now. So in the red and white livery there, VP Gaming are are up to fourth team islands racing i think have dropped to seventh place it looked like they'd lost a, a couple more positions uh, just in the background we can see their team islands racing in fact just sneak back through to sixth place so uh, they're going backwards and forwards at the moment and we pick up that battle now they have williams just in front and team islands racing brave around the outside there uh, through the corvette curves oh and off into the gravel there unfortunately one of the teams having an off there just at the end of the curves and uh, going to drop all the way to the back of the field. I think that was Lightspeed Esports potentially uh, who went off. But uh, in fact, we'll pick that up. Was it Radicals maybe? I think it was Radicals online. So that's a shame for them. They've dropped down to 11th place as we complete lap number one of 32. Yeah, there's two nasty zones on this track. Coming onto the mole sand on the exit and that, you know, the yellow curves that we saw on the exit, that left-hander towards the end of the circuit. If you run the car over there, you're really you know, dancing with the devil there. The, the, curve, the car and the curves do not mix on those particular parts of the track and they can spit the car off for no apparent reason as you've seen with Radicals unfortunately finding out already on the first lap of this race so we've got another 31 to go so still plenty of opportunity for other drivers to find themselves out there but from speaking to the guys they're doing everything they can to not be out there they don't want to run the risk of being put in the wall by those curbs they'd rather sacrifice a bit of time by not going all the way out there and they're keeping their car clean well in our pro team series team, team Highlands Racing uh, finished all the way well ended that round uh, which was two races of course all the way down in 16th place which was uh, at the very back of the field but here going along very well they're up into fifth at the moment so uh, that potentially uh, highlights the fact that that was maybe just a little bit of bad luck for them at the first round of the protein series this the invitational of course there we can see uh, vp gaming i think they're currently in sixth place uh, at the fact make that fourth of course they're in that lead battle so just ahead of them uh, is Veloci, Lazarus, uh, and then our race leaders as well, which is the Jean Alesi Esports Academy. But uh, radical, uh, but uh, just sing off the back there at the moment, aren't they, our VP Gaming? They just need to try and close in, but it looks like we've got a battle forming ahead between Veloce and Lazarus, who uh, appeared to be side by side. So we'll pick up that battle for second and third in just a second. Fordzilla in the background have gone up into 10th place, so they're trying to uh, move back up the order. Here are Team Highlands Racing once again, uh, battling away with Lightspeed Esports and Team Highlands Racing trying to make the move for sixth place. Yeah, side by side, the mole sand's going to be pretty much the case. I think every single lap if we get the opportunity to. The, the, the uh, slip stream is so effective on this track, especially with these cars as well. I'm sure they're sitting in the cockpit, though, contemplating a lot of the time where they could have you know, put an extra click on the final gear just to give them an extra bit of top speed as their nose to tail into the braking zone, but nothing coming of it. See, team, team FGTR are on the move. They started down in 11th place. They're up to 9th, so just broken into the top 10. We go on board with Team Highlands Racing. They're trying to chase down uh, Lightspeed Esports at the moment as uh, they make their way up towards the Porsche curves. It's still the John Alesi Esports Academy who lead from Veloci, Lazarus, VP Gaming, Williams, Lightspeed, then Team Highlands Racing who we're watching at the moment who are trying to get through into sixth place in towards uh, Indianapolis we go now and Team Highlands just getting a little bit sideways that perhaps the trickiest corner on the circuit in this car isn't it yeah so you come through that fast right hand you know it's, it's undulation it's cambered as well so the car's just moving around underneath you and you hit the brake pedal hoping that it's going to stop and still be pointing in the right direction when you actually get to the turning of the next corner the sharp nut and three left hander it's pretty as you say the most troublesome corner on the circuit it appears from what we've seen in practice they, there's a variety of different lines they seem to be taking, whether it's on purpose or the car dictating where they go, I don't know, but somehow they managed to get it turned in and carry on their way. It seems the pack are fairly close together just looking up the road as they entered the Porsche curves. Uh, BHK are just behind this, and the more uh, that light speed and Team Highlands racing battle, the more that BHK are going to close in. They're 1.6 seconds back from that battle uh, at the moment, and BHK started right at the back of the field. So they're having a good race so far. They've kept out of trouble, and they're starting to pick up the rewards of that. They're up into eighth place now, so uh, a good few positions gained uh, for them, but just uh, ahead as we uh, now come down to the four chicanes. I wonder if Team Highlands Racing might line up a move here on Lightspeed Esports. They don't. They think they're better of it for the time being. Uh, but uh, out of the chicanes we come now and down onto the start-finish straight. We are looking uh, back 
uh, at that battle. Here is the John Lacey Esports Academy. We were looking back from them uh, just a second ago. They're going uh, now into the Dunlop chicane. And uh, in the background there, someone getting all out of shape. I think that might have been Team Highlands Racing. Have they managed to pick up a place, I wonder, as we now head underneath the Dunlop Bridge and down to the S's. The Lochi we are on board with, looking back uh, at the moment at Lazarus, uh, who are trying to uh, trying to hold off uh, third place. So Lazarus doing pretty well at the moment, and they've essentially brought in a new, a uh, whole different range of drivers with them for this event. Yeah, they'll be very pleased with the start they've had. Now, both the, the guys here are driving and the drivers who obviously have had to stand down for this event. They'll be pleased to see their colleagues doing this so well. It's you know, a team sport at the end of the day. That's why they're all here and why they're representing you know, under different drivers, but the same team. And uh, no, they can't complain with third at the moment. They started fifth, so they've gained two positions. They're holding on to the back of the lot just about, but they're both just about losing touch with the John Lacey Esports Academy drivers who are clearing off up the road, which they'll be pleased about. Um, so they've probably just about broken slipstream range, I think. So as long as they keep it clean, they might be uh, ones to watch later on to see if they get called back in. Well, there is Veloce. I've got to say, the John Lacey Esports Academy, since taking the lead, they've done a very good job just to hold a gap of about, it's about 300 feet, but they've just managed to keep that gap. Uh, from Veloce. It seems the race is starting to settle down now. I say that we have got a challenge for third place. I think that was VP Gaming trying to go into third place ahead of Lazarus. We'll pick that battle up in just a second and there it is. Now you can see it in the background and that is indeed VP Gaming going into third place. Can they hold it when we get to the breaking zone though? This is Veloce in second place we're looking at. Behind them though is a battle for third place going on and VP Gaming who Dropped down the order a little bit at the start and now starting to come back up the order and they're into third place now ahead of Lazarus. So that's one down, two more to go and they look the quickest on track at the moment, it seems. Yeah, they might have to make a decision soon whether they want to start trying to work together to try and close up to the leaders to make sure they don't get away because as we mentioned, it's a winner take so there's no point fighting for you know, second, third and fourth when you're letting the leader get away from you because that's race over and event over essentially. They need to work together almost at this stage to keep themselves all in the fight and then they can scrap it out later towards the end hopefully. Yeah, to remind you this is the team's invitational the winners qualify for the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final the rest of the results after that are essentially irrelevant so uh, it is winner takes all all or nothing now as we go back to Team Highlands Racing who are had a very busy race so far they're now in sixth place as we head up towards Arnage and they're going to have to get on the defensive once again uh, with Lightspeed Esports trying to come round the outside and a good move that there from Lightspeed Esports uh, good on the brakes around the outside Team Highlands Racing good respect shown by them and Lightspeed Esports up into sixth place. Yeah, brilliant move going around the outside. Now, it, it, it takes respect from two drivers to make that move work. We've seen, as you say, Lando crash into that tyre wall on the exit. It's so easy to do when it's just you, let alone when you're going side by side with another car. So great respect shown by those guys, and hopefully they'll continue their battle throughout the rest of the next few laps, at least. But battling like this, aren't they just harming their progress and their chances of uh, getting a, a top three result? Of course, the win is what they all want, but uh, battling away like this on lap three of 32 isn't doing either of them any favours is it it's good to watch for us but uh, for them they're just dropping further back from the top five you're right and say it depends on the drivers in the in the cockpit whether they feel that they can actually go faster rather than sitting behind the car and just you know, make sure they don't cost each other time if they feel that they can go a lot faster when they're the car in front they need to make that move but they need to do it without costing themselves time during the overtake which that move it wasn't ideal but it no, didn't cost them too much time they can carry on as they were and hopefully they'll be able to stick together and they claw their way back towards the rest of the pack in front of them but they already look to be quite a way behind unfortunately i could just see the gap between the two leaders the jean alessi esports academy and veloci has come down only ever so slightly it's now 1.4 seconds between uh, Veloce and the Jean Lacey Esports Academy who currently lead the race. We're staying with this battle at the moment. You can see the car getting all out of shape under braking, but uh, this is the battle we were indeed uh, throwing to. It is Veloce in second place at the moment. The gap seems to be uh, coming down. I wonder how they're feeling at this moment in time. Louise is with the team at the moment.
where's that Veloce car behind us? We need to make sure we're covering that line. But at the moment, it, you know, no mistakes are being made, which is you no know, just because the caliber of these drivers are so high. That's why they're at the front of the pack. And uh, you know, just carry on pounding those laps in. Make sure you don't make mistakes being the car following. And you never know, you might get lucky with a mistake in the car in front. And what do Veloce do? Of course, we're following now their second place. Uh, what do they do when they catch John Lacey Esports Academy? That might be a strange question. You'd expect they would just try and go by, but uh, if they start a bit of a tussle, then of course we've got the likes of VP Gaming just behind who could close in. Yeah, it's a strategical call because they'll have to look at whether the pace that they can run at the front is enough to pull away from you no know, third, fourth place behind them, and then they can you know, scrap out between themselves alone later in the race. Or they'll have to look at the fact of you know, which drives they got lined up to come in. Now, are they going to need to get track position to then try and make sure that later in the race they're you know, not susceptible to coming under pressure from behind from you know, other cars? It's a, a call that hopefully we'll get to see them make if they can close that gap up just a little bit. I've got to give a shout out to Williams in fifth place because they do seem to be closing in uh, on the top four as a whole at the moment. They are having a, a pretty pretty decent stint in the race so far. This is only lap number four of 32, so still a long way to go. Uh, and this BHK Motorsport, of course, uh, a real team who competes in the European Le Mans series, but they have an eSport presence as well, as many teams now do. Uh, they're sitting a little bit down the pack at the moment, down in ninth place. And uh, for them, I guess they're just going to try and hope that their strategy, whatever that is, can uh, help them come up the order. Just ahead of them, of course, is Jota. We haven't spoken, I don't think, enough about them. They're in eighth place at the moment. They went off uh, at the very first corner of the race into the gravel, got back on the track, and, uh, and now they've got back up to eighth. You'd say even winning from there is going to be a bit of a big ask, but... Uh, they're putting in a, a good performance, I'd say, so far. Yeah, I mean, it, it's difficult to pick yourself up you now when you've had a, a mistake or an incident at the start of the race which has put you at the back. You know, you're, you're in a good position, you start fourth, and then by the exit of the turn, the first few turns, you're in last place. It's, it's never a good feeling. And to not let that get to you as a driver whilst you're in the cockpit is a, a big thing. You need to be you know, stronger than that mentally to be able to go, right, now I've got a race on my hands, I'm going to put my head down and get it done. And at the moment, you know, Sean Arnold's doing a, a decent job. He's getting you know, back through the field, up into eighth, as you say, so already made a few places, and there's still quite a long way left of this stint. They're at least, well, not maybe even halfway through their stint. The first pit stops were expecting maybe lap eight onwards. So if they're going to go longer than that, he's still got plenty of time to get his head down, use that clean air that's in front of him to you know, try and put in some fast times. When do you reckon we'll see the first pit stops? Of course, all, the, all three drivers have to do at least 30 minutes. Uh, and we spoke about potentially drivers doing half, two drivers doing 30 minutes and then one an hour or maybe a splitting it down the middle between all three drivers but when would you expect to see the first stops happen? Uh, depending on how they're planning their strategy it could be as early as lap eight I think it's going to be the earliest cutoff points they've got to make sure they cross over that half an hour window that 30 right. minute window because if they don't they'll be disqualified essentially so it's better to be safe than sorry now they'll have to work out what sort of lap times they're running how that works out you now over the fact that they're running seven or eight laps it's just under I think four minutes it's about three minutes fifty or so yeah. they're running so eight laps should see them through comfortably we may see some pit stops then. They may have all gone for the same strategy and go long on the first stint. We don't know at this stage. Well, we're going back to Team Highlands Racing and Lightspeed Esports, who are probably going to be sick of the sight of each other by the end of this race. This is BHK uh, a little bit further back that uh, we are looking at now. They're just inside uh, at the top 10 uh, at the moment, but uh, BHK uh, sitting in 10th place. It looks like uh, they've actually just lost the place there to Radicals Online, so... Uh, I think a little bit of a mistake. It looked like they may have run wide there, but uh, uh, BHK now dropped to 10th place. So a frustrating mistake for them. They've got plenty of space behind them, though, so they've just got to try and uh, compose themselves now and uh, go back after Radicals Online, of course. A bit of a gap back to forward Zilla. Uh, team FGTR have had a couple of issues uh, throughout the race, but uh, it's down in 10th. How frustrating is that, Harry, uh, coming from your own experience? In fact, we'll come back to that in just a second as we uh, pick up uh, Team Highlands Racing once again, battling with Lightspeed Esports. I think in the toe, it looks like Team Highlands Racing have gone through. In fact, they're going to be side by side down into Molsan Corner. Under breaking, Lightspeed Esports are going to try and hold it around the outside, just about missing the gravel trap. And we'll still be side by side, I think, down to Indianapolis. We're on board with Team Highlands Racing. Uh, we can see uh, one of the drivers closing in behind, but uh, we can't see Lightspeed Esports who are to our left. It is Jota, in fact, who are the team closing in. So they're going to be very happy with this to see two teams ahead battling away for sixth place. They've got a very good chance of taking sixth very, very quickly here. 
Yeah, they'll be hoping there's a bit of coming together into these next few corners they can just nip through without being held up too much because obviously the problem they might run into is they're going to make it a three-way battle and end up battling all between the lot of them. There's a car running wide uh, in front of them and that might be them getting position right there and then. Yeah, Lightspeed Esports running wide there and Jota now help themselves to seventh place. So one down, one to go for Jota. Well, in terms of this little battle anyway, they'll be hoping to make a, a couple more perhaps after this but uh, Jota now lining up Team Highlands racing for sixth place uh, to remind you Jota qualified up in fourth place uh, and they were only just over a tenth away from taking pole position so they have the speed to be battling with the likes of the Jean Alesi Esports Academy, Veloce, BB Gaming, Lazarus and so on uh, but uh, unfortunately due to a first corner incident they have dropped down the field. We're on board with Lightspeed Esports who are in eighth place at the moment Ahead of us is the aforementioned Jota, who are just trying to uh, get the run on Team Islands Racing. I think patience is the key sometimes when you're coming back through the field as well. You, want, you don't want to have two stabs at making an overtake hurry. You want to make it once, make it cleanly, and then get away. Yeah, it's very easy to let the red mist descend uh, when you're fighting your way back through the field from uh, an early race incident. But they're doing a good job. They're up to seventh now. They've got sixth place in their sights. Be, Sean Arnold will be hoping that he can get in front of this car in front of him and then all that clear space that's in front of that car is his to use so then start pouring up towards the car in front pumping in those you know, fast laps whilst he's got the opportunity and then hopefully giving his teammates a good opportunity you know, to carry on the rest of the job when they step in later in the race. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about uh, their tactics in just a second. But for now, we're going to go on board with Team Island Racing sideways through the first corner there. Now into Dunlop Chicane. They've run wide. I think they're feeling the pressure here a little bit from Jota. And that is going to be the easiest overtake Jota make all day. They now go up into sixth place. So the recovery well and truly on now. They're back up into sixth place. It's not where they started. Two more places to go before they get back to their starting position of fourth. But uh, Jota, it's that presence they carry, Harry, isn't it? They were second uh, at the first round of the Pro Team Series. That presence they carry with them means people like the Team Islands Racing, anyone, in fact, when you see Jota in your mirrors, it's uh, very likely you'll make a mistake and let them go through. Yeah, as you said, they carry a big presence you know, with that name on the car. And also, the drivers they've got driving for them, they're very well known. Two very easy overtakes there. That would have been exactly how someone would have wanted it to be. There, the case of coming up beyond two cars battling, one makes a mistake and nip through there. Half lap later, and not even that, the other car makes a mistake. I've nipped through there as well. And now look at all this clean air he's got in front of him uh, to carry on catching up. Although we're on board with the light speed car, obviously the one that's lost out the most from that uh, three lane battle that we saw. They're now at the back of that trio. Yeah, let's talk about light speed because uh, they've got drivers from uh, Australia, Mexico, and uh, from the UK as well. For them to get time to practice together has been very difficult. So what they did decide to do uh, is come here on Tuesday, oh, as early this week, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, stay together and practice that way. Yeah, I mean, the team aspect of this competition is massive. So any opportunity you've got to practice you know, with your teammates you know, in the same place at the same time. So you're not just doing it over headset or online. You know, you're actually there in person, seeing what they see, feeling what they feel in terms of the car and the way it reacts to certain changes is everything. Now, Le Mans eSports is a team sport. Now, that's why we've got three drivers here representing each team. So, yeah, that would be great for them. Now, with the limitations they've got, as you mentioned, with being scattered all around the world with their locations to come together in one place to then do their practice before a big event like this be worth a, a great, great deal to them. I guess it's the case, isn't it? Because you, you could just go in and practice on your own, but when there's three of you, you want to put three cars in a private lobby and, and kind of racing, practice racing each other, practice slipstreaming each other, qualifying times as well if you keep all the cars ghosted. So is that what it's all about when there's three of you together rather than, than just the, the one? Could, could you say, give everyone, this is going to be your stint time, let's go and practice that. Is that not the same as, as having the three of you on track together? Yeah, I mean, if they can do it in person, they work out what stint they want to do and practice like hopping in and out of a rig and carrying on from where they left off. The fact that they can also practice like racecraft together. You know, these guys won't want to practice with other people and other teams. Obviously, they don't want to give away any secrets that they might find. So practicing together with as many cars as possible to learn as much as possible is always crucial and key for them. Um, and the fact they've had the chance to do that. It might have been a little bit late you know, coming to this event. You don't want to be making last minute changes, of course, coming into an event. You want to be nice and settled and know exactly what's going on. Um, but they seem to be doing OK for now. They would have liked it to go a bit better, I think, but still a long way to go. Well, Team Highlands Racing, uh, Darren King, uh, in the rig, rig for them uh, at the moment. Uh, seventh place uh, on track uh, they are is uh, Team Highlands Racing. And they've been 
the centre of attention for the uh, large majority of the race. But Veloci, they continue to close the gap to the leaders. It's only one second now. Let's hear from the team. They are with Louise Beckett. try and keep up with them. Well, let's hope that James can continue the good work and get ahead. Back to you, Chris. Want to race for them as a last minute you know, substitute to make sure they can at least compete. So I think James will be looking though, ahead for his teammates and thinking, I want to, just want to get as far as possible uh, to give him the best opportunity and give my other teammate the best opportunity I've got and uh, we've got as the race goes on. But if he, if he gave him the opportunity, he would want to pass him absolutely. But it's just closing that. It's been stuck at around a second for, a, for quite a few laps now. And I reckon he'd be wanting to close that down if he can. I think you know, making progress, when you're second, you might as well be looking at trying to get that gap down and overtaking if you can whilst you've got a little bit of a gap behind you. Yeah, well, we did have one group of four at one stage for the lead, didn't we? Now it's kind of split up into two groups of two because uh, VP Gaming uh, and Lazarus are battling for third and fourth. But we're on board with Veloci at the moment, and there you can see the John Lacey Esports Academy just ahead of us. We're getting to the stage where they could be eligible to make a pit stop. They have to do uh, at least 30 minutes each to the drivers in this two-hour endurance race. Three drivers uh, in each team uh, to remind you. Uh, and we're getting to the stage of that pit stop. And this might be, uh, and this is nothing against the John Lacey Esports Academy. They might be sitting there thinking, well, they just can't catch us. And maybe that's the truth. But this might be where if the Lotte want to make a move, that will be the best time to do it. Absolutely, you know, there's always the undercut or overcut opportunity you know, with these races, so we'll have to see. You know, lap 8 now is when we think we might see the first one at the end of this. You know, we've got a great vantage point here to see if drivers are getting ready to you know, come onto the stage to take over, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, but so, there are multiple ways that this could go. We'll have to see how that unfolds in the next few laps, whether Veloce want to pull the trigger first, whether John Lacey pull the trigger first, or whether they both may follow suit, come in early, stay out. We'll have to wait and see. It's uh, of course Camille Polowski who's in for the John Lacey Esports Academy. We're on board with Veloci though, James Baldwin, 22 year old from uh, uh, High Wycombe. Of course, uh, was crowned world's fastest gamer uh, last year as well. So uh, he uh, carries a, a title which uh, is pretty handy to have, I'd say, in esports. Uh, it's pr pretty relevant <laughs> at this stage. But uh, he's closing in on the John Lacey Esports Academy uh, team. And uh, it seems to be getting closer all the time. Now we go back to the Lazarus team 
who are sitting in third place at the moment. Uh, and Lewis Bentley is in for them uh, at the moment. So Lewis Bentley doing the first stint. Again, not a, a not say not a huge name within the Forza community. Uh, more known for driving uh, on other platforms, but uh, uh, seems to have crossed over very well and uh, running in third place at the moment, being the best of the rest, if you like, not battling for the lead at the moment. There's still a long way to go, but should anything happen between the two leaders when and if they start battling, Lazarus could be there to pick up the pieces. Absolutely, you know, you've got to be in the right place at the right time, you know, whilst the leaders are potentially going to have a, a battle on their hands in the near future, third place is a place to be in case there is any, you know, coming together. So you know, they've obviously got close picture from behind that they'll have to keep an eye on as well, you know, similar to what the leaders have got. So if these guys start battling from third and fourth, then we might see a bit of a, a more of a move from Lotte as the race goes on. But I say they're pretty much as close as they can be at this stage with the race leaders right in front. Well, there we can see the leaders uh, just ahead as uh, we go on board with Colocci at the moment, but it is Lazarus just behind who are uh, holding off uh, the Williams team. John Lacey ahead of us at the moment and doing a great job to stay in the lead. It was uh, an academy that was launched in 2018 by former F1 driver uh, Jean Lacey. And not only is it a team, but it uh, offers training and support to uh, sim racers. Uh, trying to make, trying to turn them from sim races into uh, professional esports athletes. That's what the Jean Lacey Esports Academy is all about, and uh, clearly uh, that is working. Camille Polowski, the 22-year-old uh, from Poland, uh, with them at the at the moment, and uh, a world champion uh, in Project Cars, three years in the last four. So uh, knows how to win uh, big events like this, uh, does Camille, and I'd say that's showing at the moment with uh, him. Uh, holding off the pressure from James Baldwin behind. Yeah, I believe Camille was also part of the world's fastest gaming series that James actually won. So I'm sure a there's a little bit as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure there's a little bit of beef between these two. Um, they wants to come out on top on this time that they're battling against each other, as it seems like they seem to be getting closer and closer without actually thinking that they could get closer and closer. They'll be pushing each other around if we're not uh, not too careful. I'd say this is it. I'd say it's game on now. This is the closest they have been. So, well, if you're tuning in online, if you've just tuned in, you've tuned in at the, the, the right time. If you're around the Autosport show in hall number one near the stage, then uh, do come over because it looks like it's about to kick off for the lead of the Autosport Team Invitational. Winner takes all in this one. It may only be lap eight of uh, 32, but this could be crucial with the first round of pit stops coming up. Don't forget the winner qualifies for the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final. If you're watching at home, you can also qualify for that via the Rivals event on Forza Motorsport 7 one of which is going on now until the 19th of January. And if you're here at the Autosport Show, you can go to the Motorsport Games Activation Area. And if you finish in the top three on the Le Mans Esports Series rigs, set a time on those completely free to take part, then you will also uh, go and race at the Le Mans 24 hour at the Super Final. So all to play for this weekend. And by the end of the weekend, we'll probably have our first 12 drivers, I'd say, lined up for that Le Mans Esports Series Super Final. And it looks like the first pit stop has just taken place. Yeah, it looks like the full dinner team making their first stop at the end of lap eight, as we uh, suggested it might be. I can see a few other drivers lurking around the, the edge of the stage, looking to pounce on the rig when they get the opportunity to. We've got one down the end team, there as well. That's Team FGTR. It is indeed. So they're making a the pit stop at the first opportunity. So again, that's one of the strategies we've said we might find. But obviously, the two leaders that we've got next to us they stayed out for at least another lap, and the John Lacey guys have got uh, a bit of a gap just at the right time when they needed it, I think, with the slit stream effect down the mole sand. They managed to pull just enough of a gap in the first sector to, I think, avoid any kind of pressure into the hairpin at the end. Uh, so that's Chris Chadwick out for Team FGTR. Pete Andrews uh, jumps in the rig for them. Uh, and then for a uh, Ford Zeller, Perpy has jumped out, and uh, Anthony Deal uh, has jumped in. So, uh, well, we're going to take a very quick breather on comms. We're going to go down to Louise Beckett, who's with Tobin Lee. Yes, I'm going to try and speak to our resident expert for Forza here at the event, Tobin Lee. Tobin, we're already seeing strategy with the front runners. Yeah, there's two kind of races going on at the front. So we've got the Jean Lacy team who are working together in many ways with Veloce. Now it's going to be interesting to see how much they, they uh, battle because the more they do, the more they'll be brought up into the second battle which is formed of Williams and Lazarus. 
and um, Lazarus, a team that I know quite well, will be sure to try to capitalise on that if they can. But it's probably in the best interest of the top two to kind of keep themselves to themselves and just try and get away and build up that gap. OK, we've seen our first driver change just happening. They've got a minimum of 30 minutes. So what do you expect to see? Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of variation. I feel like in this kind of competition, it's quite likely that drivers are going to work out who their most competitive driver is and really try and maximize that and get the most out of them. So therefore, put them in for the longest amount of time that they possibly can. But we'll see. It's going to vary a lot. OK, thanks, Tobin. Speak to you later. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Louise. Well, it's been very close for third place since you've been away, and it's very close for the lead as well. We're looking back from our leader, John Alacy, Esports Academy. James Baldwin there for Veloce, trying to close in, and it looks like we're side by side for third place as well. Williams trying to get past Lazarus. They're up the inside into the Porsche curves, and they just about make the move stick there. Brilliant stuff from Williams. Lazarus are going to try and fight back into the left-hander, but not enough room. There may have even been a slight bit of contact there, but Lazarus in the end choosing to back out so Williams who ran off into the gravel at the end of the Molsan straight on lap number one have now got themselves back into third place an update on Jota by the way they're still in sixth as they try and recover from going off at the first corner but we must go back to our two leaders because it is very very close between the John Alacy Esports Academy and Veloci as well we're in the four chicanes at the moment just about to come across the line to start lap number 10 and there we can see Veloce trying to close in, but John Alessi yet again are holding off the pressure from Veloce very, very well. They've had pressure from about a second behind, but uh, and then they've had some challenges now from Veloce, but uh, Veloce just can't seem to be breaking them down at the moment. Yeah, the John Alessi guys seem to be very good in the slow speed corners. Now, there's a lot of time to be made up in the slow speed corners, like that final chicane in the first few corners of uh, this uh, lap as well. They seem to be able to get that gap, so when they come to the Molsan, they've got enough of a gap to make sure that they're not in the slipstream range too harshly to make sure they're going to be under pressure come the hairpin at the end of the Molsan. And so, as you can see again, now we've just seen them in the final sector nose to tail and coming towards the Molsan again. They've now got that little gap, little breather between them, which means they'll hopefully be out of reach of Veloce for their sake. Well, Lightspeed Esports did just do a pit stop there. Mariano Acana, the Mexican, has jumped out, and the Australian Callum Lawrence has got in. So. Uh, that is now the third team to make a stop, unless I missed one of them, but uh, three teams have stopped, nine teams yet to make their first pit stop, and we go back to uh, this battle then, which is for the lead of the race, and Veloce have gotten alongside, well this is the first time that they've had their nose in front in the Autosport Teams Invitational, and it looks like Veloce are about to take the lead, there's a long straight to go though, no chicanes don't forget, and the John Alacy Esports Academy still have time to try and get back through. It looks like they just seem to have a little bit more pace now getting towards the end of the straight. It's going to be down into the breaking zone. John Alacy may look for the switch back here. The John Alacy Esports Academy, Veloce are going to try and hold off on the inside and turn it into a block pass, I'm sure. But let's see as we get down towards it. Veloce now have their full car in front and will now be able to try and block off any attempts from the John Alacy Esports Academy to come back through into the breaking zone, we go, and that is move complete. So new leaders in the Autosport Teams Invitational, Veloce Esports take the lead of the race, and if the race were to finish now, they would be going to the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final to try and retain their title. Absolutely, you can see James on screen looking absolutely ecstatic with his move for the lead <laughs> right there. No movement in his face at all. He hasn't changed his expression <laughs> from being in second or first. See, he's in the zone. That's what it is as an esports driver. You've got to be in the zone. And when you take someone for the lead, you, all you care about is getting away from that driver and extending the lead. He knows that's what his job is to do. John Lacey, I don't think he'll be too disheartened by that. Obviously, they know the status in terms of the team dynamics and how the strategy is going to pay out. So I reckon they'll be quite comfortable to sit there. As long as they can hang on to the coattails of the Lodgy guys, I think they'll be quietly confident as the race goes on. I heard James Baldwin look like that when he won World's Fastest Gamer as well. Just, just, just holds that expression all the time. But uh, we go back on board with the Jean Alacy Esports Academy. There's a long way to go in this race. Harry, I'm going to put you in the seat of the Jean Alacy Esports Academy car. What are you thinking now? You've just lost the lead. You're probably coming towards the end of your stint. What is it you do at this moment in time? I think you, unless there's a clear opportunity, I think they'll be quite comfortable. I'd be quite comfortable to sit behind that Veloce car, knowing that I think arguably James is probably the best driver 
uh, out there. Now we've seen what he's capable of you know, in many series. As we've got the is that the John Lacey car going a little yeah. bit wide and losing a bit of time, yeah. so that's not what yeah, they want to be doing. They don't want to be doing that at all. That's giving the Vlogic guys a bit of that extra confidence, maybe a bit of you know, self-doubt coming into play now. As they're getting squirrely on the exit as well, they're losing more time in this final sector. That is not what they want to be doing. I'd say it may be a pit stop about to come up, perhaps for John Lacey Esports Academy. Is this a good time to come in? It isn't. Well, I think uh, just a little bit rattled by the fact that they had lost the lead there, John Lacey Esports Academy. This is bringing Williams back into play uh, and Lazarus as well. So the Williams car starting to close in. Of course, Cuba Brzezinski in for them and Lewis Bentley in that Lazarus car are also out. Yeah, it looks like the weather's rolling as well. You see the headlights on, the skies are darkened. I don't know if any of these guys have done any wet practice, I'm sure they have, but I'm hoping it won't be that way, especially for the Vlogger and John Lacey guys who are out front quite comfortably at the moment, but headlights ablaze, clouds are rolling in, the mist is rolling in as well, it's getting pretty murky out there. Well, it's, it, it, it can happen, I don't think we know from our experience in Le Mans. Thankfully, when we were there, it, it didn't happen, but uh, of course it can do. Now, let's pick up Jota. VP Gaming have uh, unfortunately dropped down a little bit, they've just dropped off the tail of uh, Williams, and they're now under pressure from Jota, so Jota who are on the recovery here. I think uh, it's been a, a tricky few laps for the VP Gaming team. They've dropped back from Williams, and now they're under pressure from Jota as they come through Tetch Rouge and onto the Molsan straight. Yeah, a little bit of a discussion going on with the Blotchy guys here. I think they're possibly working out when they want to be making a pit stop, as you can see on screen now. Hopefully we won't catch any uh, hints and tricks on the phone there from Hayden as he's showing us on, on camera. But I think they're just working out how many laps they can get out of James before he has to obviously come in so the other guys can get their mid and half an hour stints. So that's what you think the case is. He's going to go for the longest stint potentially now and uh, the other guys will reduce their stints to try and take advantage of the pace that uh, uh, James is currently on. But uh, similar pace being shown by Jota, if not even better. They're absolutely flying at the moment. We're going to go on board uh, with them. Sean Arnold in the seat for them at the moment, and they're closing in on VP Gaming. Johan Ackerman uh, is in for VP Gaming uh, at the moment, and they are being caught here. What do you do now? Do you just let Jota go by? They haven't had to do, well, not from what we've seen on, on screen anyway, huge amounts of uh, hard overtaking. They've just uh, been at, sort of been let by through mistakes, if you like. So this could be the first time we see them really have to make a move. But do you just let them by if you're VP Gaming? Or do you I don't think they've position? got a choice. <laughs> I think they're being go. overtaken. Yep, down the inside, Jota are going to, in fact, take that position. The switchback, though, VP Gaming draw back alongside uh, on the exit there of Molsan. So uh, down towards Indianapolis we go. I don't really think you want to be stuck on the outside here from what we've seen. The cars going through there, the characteristics, they're getting all out of shape. But Jota are going to try and brave it. They're going to be on the outside then going in towards Indianapolis. They tuck back in behind, in fact, go back to the outside once again. It's VP Gaming on the inside. Jota, who are recovering from dropping to last place on the outside. We go on board, and they're going to stay all the way around the outside. Fantastic move. Can they complete it, though? Up towards Arnage. It looks like VP Gaming have got back through. They're now going to be on the inside, and good driving from both teams. VP Gaming hold on. Oh, but they've run wide under break-in, and Jota go through. Brilliant overtake. So Jota back through, and it looked like just a bit of a mistake there from VP Gaming. Johan Ackerman running a little bit wide, and that's allowed Sean Arnold to go up towards fifth race. Yeah, very fair racing as they come into Indianapolis. They're giving each other space. Now, side by side today is incredibly difficult. So now hats off to those guys for managing it. And then just a simple mistake potentially into the breaking point of Arnage running a bit wide and Jota are through. Another relatively easy move it, when it comes to it. Obviously, they've done the side by side bit before, which was a, a bit scary, I'd imagine. But <laughs> and they just about got away with it. And now they're up into, what's that, fifth place now. So they're on the charge. Still well more than half this race to go. Other drivers come into it. They're not out of this. They are not out of this at all. So Jota then in fifth place, and we're looking at them at the moment, VP Gaming behind. It's a little bit of a gap then back to Team Highlands Racing, uh, who are in seventh place. It's still close between the top two, though, and I'll tell you what, the battle between second and third is the one that's perhaps the more interesting now, because Williams are closer to John Alacy Esports Academy than John Alacy Esports Academy are to the leaders, Veloci. So just behind this, Williams are starting to close in. That is BHK Motorsport uh, in the first of the rigs, and they seem to be lining up for a pit stop, and indeed they were. Just as we left them, they were pulling in to the pit. So they become the fourth team 
to make their first pit stop. The weather definitely changing at the moment, so it's going to throw uh, a different challenge to the drivers. And there is, we're going to watch the pit stop now. Out comes driver number one, Ingo's driver number two. So that is Dario Vallelunga done. Roberto Pignataro jumps in the seat and uh, adjusts the rig to suit him. And we'll now return once the fuel has gone in and uh, then we will be back uh, ready to race. BHK, there they go into the pits now. Uh, but uh, very close between the top three. Williams were definitely closing in on the John Alesi uh, Esports Academy. Definitely more than what John Alesi seemed to be on Veloce. That might be changing. But with the weather conditions as they are, it just seems to be changing every corner now. Yeah, they seem to be dropping back into the clutches of Williams rather than hanging on to the coattails of Veloce, it must be said. Um, Lazarus looks to be very close to third, third, third place as well. So we can't discount them at all. Anyone in the top four, I'd say, at this stage of the race could win this one. It seems to be a lot closer than it was four or five laps ago. Yeah, the weather plays a part now. It's not just track surface. It's the change of the lighting affects your, uh, you know, your braking zones and your accelerators and your turning zones. So that could be playing a part as to why some guys are finding it more difficult than others to adapt. The VP Gaming are coming back at Jota here. They don't want to uh, lose that fifth place. They, of course, lost it at Arnage on the last lap, but they're trying to take it right back. Sean Arnold on the outside there for Jota and then for VP Gaming, Johan Ackerman on the inside. Into Molsan, just a little bit of contact there. Sean Arnold's going to try and stay on the outside. Can he hold on? Well, he's going to still be on the outside then up towards Indianapolis. Great driving from the pair of them. Johan Ackerman, we are on board with to the inside of him. Uh, it's, of course, uh, Sean Arnold, we're on board with, sorry, Johan Ackerman to the inside. So Jota thought they probably had that move done and dusted. May have even been uh, trying to forget about VP Gaming, but VP Gaming fighting back. When you're recovering in a race like this, Harry, it just gets harder and harder to make moves the further you go up the field. And well, running very, very wide there, VP Gaming. They've gone off the track, in fact, so big mistake from VP Gaming. And through go Jota to reclaim that fifth place. Yeah, I mean, we saw the same kind of thing last lap, didn't we, with them heading side by side into Indian Indianapolis. And they, we said they were very fair and very clean. And I think maybe VP Gaming have looked at that and gone, we can afford to be a bit more aggressive. And unfortunately, they've gone a bit too aggressive and ended yeah. up in the gravel. And they've lost the position again down to sixth, Joe to back up to fifth. And now they have got that clean air behind them to make sure they're not going to be coming under pressure for the next few laps, at least, as they'll be pushing on towards potentially a pit stop within, I guess, the next three or four laps, because we're going to be approaching the hour mark halfway point. So they've only got three or four laps before they'll have to come in as a compulsory pit stop and sort the drivers. Yep, so it could get very busy on stage here in the next uh, five to ten minutes with uh, various pit stops taking place probably around the same time. It seems to me that a lot of teams have perhaps, well, of course, the second pit stops could be done at different times, maybe, but uh, it seems most have gone with uh, kind of the same strategy, do uh, the long stint first and then the short stints after that. Yeah, I mean, with that being said, there's you know, an opportunity where we might run into the fact that some teams make their first stop while at the same time another team is making their second stop and changing all their drives. So they won't have to stop against. They will effectively be a pit stop behind, but they won't then have to change another driver. So that's something to look out for uh, in the later stages of the race. As you can see, the gaps at the top, John Lacey now two and a half seconds behind Veloce and closer to the car behind, unfortunately, for them. So I don't know what's happened. I don't know if it's the weather changing, the lighting changing that's sort of disrupted their rhythm that they were in. So they looked very comfortable out front until the Veloce car got within overtaking distance, made the overtake happen, and unfortunately, it seems to have hampered them quite badly. Unfortunately, it uh, has, but uh, very, very close it is uh, between uh, second, third, and fourth uh, at the moment. Uh, and uh, you can just see them going through Tetch Rouge at the moment onto the Morsan Strait. And John Alacy Esports Academy car getting all out of shape there. Uh, as we go onto the straight now into John Alacy, it's of course uh, Camille uh, Palowski. But the Williams car is the one uh, causing the problems here, I think it's uh, fair to say. Cuba Brzezinski is in for them at the moment, the 23 year old uh, from Poland, from Warsaw. This is uh, first Forza tournament, but uh, has a world championship to his name. Uh, on uh, race room so he can win at the highest of levels maybe not on this platform uh, but uh, he's uh, coming to uh, the world of Forza it's his first tournament and he's doing very well but we're going to take a very quick break go down to Louise who's with VP Gaming Yes I'm with the manager of VP Gaming Darwin now uh, Johan just made a mistake there can he make that up? 
I'm pretty sure he will. He is pushing very hard, and we are trying to get back up to your order. How long has he got left in the chair? Maybe three, three lap, four laps. Okay, and then who's going to go in after him? Patrick will jump in. Yeah. Is he fast? He is quick. <laughs> Hope so. Back to you, Chris. Thanks very much, Louise. So, yes, Patrick Beckham, of course, sir, will be the second driver out for them. VP Gaming, uh, a brilliant start to the race. They have just seem to have struggled in this uh, latter stages of the first stint. But uh, what, would, what would you kind of put that down to, Harry? Do you think this could have been down to a few mistakes or uh, VP Gaming just lost a little bit of momentum? I'd say they're definitely still within a, a region where they could come back into play. But... Uh, at the moment, they're, they're doing the right thing by not getting too frustrated and, and throwing it all away. They're keeping themselves roughly uh, in the fight. But, of course, they'll be frustrated with uh, that last lap where, coming through this corner here, Indianapolis, they ran, uh, ran wide. It could be almost time for them to, to make a stop, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, I think they'll be looking to do that. But I think what they benefited from early on was the fact they kept their nose clean, they kept the car out of trouble while others fell off the track. No, Dota fell off, Williams, they went into the gravel. They benefited from that. And obviously, as the race has gone on, those guys have now fought their way back through. Unfortunately, those guys tend to look to be a little bit faster at this stage, at least. So that's why they've worked their way back through. And BB Gaming will drop back down towards six. They're still a place up from where they started, so that's a positive for them to try and take into the rest of the race. Um, but, you know, sixth place at the moment. Um, they're five cars ahead of them that it's going to be difficult to catch them but same, we've got other drivers to come in you know, we just heard from their drivers oh. they're saying the next driver's very quick so we'll have to wait and see how quick he is yeah well the John Alacy eSports Academy team running a little bit wide there and uh, they're now under all sorts of pressure from the Williams eSports team Kiki Brzezinski uh, closing in here on Camille Palowski uh, Camille Palowski does not only have to deal with the Williams team uh, but also, of course, the Lazarus team and Lewis Bentley in fourth place. So they've decided enough is enough now. Uh, Jean Alacy Esports Academy become the fifth team to do a stop. And at the exact same time, Lazarus do their stop as well. So uh, in for the Jean Alacy Esports Academy uh, will be uh, Danilo Santoro. And jumping in uh, for the Lazarus team is going to be Nathan Tague. So Nathan Tague jumping in for them. So that's now around half the teams who have stopped so far. Yeah, you can see the challenge they face, so when they get in the rig there, they've got to adjust it to their liking compared to the driver that's just come out. So that's part of the challenge. They then obviously got to get warmed up in the car and get into their own groove and their own rhythm. And obviously when they're coming in this close together, it's never easy to settle in when you've got someone breathing down your neck from behind. And people have had a look. Let's talk about those new places because they come out next month. What do you make of them? Someone who's used multiple uh, bits of equipment when it comes to uh, gaming rigs. What's your what's your view on the equipment? We've, I mean, we've they got? they look great. They get the job done. Now these guys, I've not had a single complaint from them at all. Now they're all very happy with it, from what I've heard. So, uh, if they're good enough for these guys, then that's a pretty good statement, I think, to have on your your you know, resume for selling play seats. Is going to be the esports guys love them. Well, Williams uh, are just about to make a stop as well. Isaac Price uh, looks to be jumping in. The 26-year-old from Gloucester. Of course, uh, an F1 Esports driver as well. And Isaac Price getting ready to jump in, jumping out for Williams. Of course, we just mentioned will be Kuba Brzezinski. We've uh, heard from him a couple of times. So uh, Isaac getting ready to come in. I'd say at the end of the next lap, they will make their stop. They look like the next team that will uh, make a pit stop. I don't think anyone else is uh, immediately about to stop with them. But let's pick up what has happened now out on track. This is always the phase of the race where things can get a bit confusing you kind of have to uh, take the order with a pinch of salt it's not really what it is essentially until all the stops uh, are completed but what we do know is the gap between Veloce and Williams is around 1200 feet yeah so you know Veloce got the head down and James as doing what he does best though he's in the lead of the race he's pounding in the lap no lap after lap being consistent as ever and that's what his job is at this point in the race now for the rest of the team is to just build that gap as much as he can and then you know, when he hands over, they'll be in the best place possible. But as you say, it's so difficult for us to keep up with exactly who's where because you've got pit stops going on, people dropping the pit stop behind, and then all of a sudden we think, oh, what happened to them? And then the other cars come in and they catch up and get the overcut potentially. But obviously Lazarus and John Lacey uh, on the track together still, so they pit at the same time so we can keep an eye on them. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Lazarus. At least they come back out with someone to chase, don't they? But uh, that could be a good... Some, some drivers prefer that aspect of having someone to chase. Some people like a clear track. I was always someone when I raced, like having someone to chase. What, what was your preference? When I like a clean track because I couldn't crash into anyone at that point. So that was my <laughs> preference most of the time. 
But no, you know, when I think being the car behind is you no know, the, the nicer thing. You've got the opportunity to overtake and have you no know, try a few different things. And when you're the car in front, you can still learn as well. You know, defending techniques. But when you're the one who's got to make the overtake, you've got something to gain. The car in front's the one who's got something to lose. So I think that's normally the way most people would look at it and think, I want to be the car who's got something to gain from this exchange, not the one who's going to potentially lose something. It's, it can be very hard at defending, can't it? It's uh, particularly uh, in esports, but. Uh, something that uh, requires practice I guess just trying to, trying to put yourself at the front and then trying to trying to hold on but uh, and roles reversed as well if you're not someone that enjoys coming through the field it's always best I guess to put yourself in a race at the back and then can't try and come through as quickly as possible. Absolutely you know that's why you know, working as a team with these guys is so important because this is where they get to practice their race craft now it's one thing to be you know, okay in qualifying but you need to have the race craft to make sure you can make up for any poor qualifying, defending attacking that kind of thing you need the whole host of no abilities in your arsenal. Well, there we go. You can see on screen we're about to have Cuba Brzezinski uh, jump out of the seat. Isaac Price will jump in. So there we go. That is uh, the stop almost completed. That is the driver change completed. The pit stop, uh, of course, will be uh, finished shortly afterwards. And I think uh, you can see that was hard work there for Cuba Brzezinski as he walks away. Tell us about the physical element of esports because uh, most people think there's absolutely no physical element to it. But when you're competing on a, on a stage like this for uh, 15 laps around uh, Le Mans, how difficult is that? Of course, you know, you're sat there in the position of a real race driver. You know, you've got to turn the steering wheel, you've got to press the pedals, you've got the heat and the lights that they play a part on you, as well as dealing with everything mentally that's going on in the race. You now it's an, another level that's added on, which I, you know, a lot of people I don't think quite understand. And now I, can, I, I get why they wouldn't understand that. But it's something you have to consider. You watch these guys and think, oh yeah, I can do that at home. But when you take everything in on there, you know, where they are, how they do it, what they're having to go through, the practice they have to put in, you know, that kind of thing, it all adds up to being a really high level of competition that they have to achieve. It's the mental fitness, isn't it? Um, if I can use that phrase of just trying to keep pumping in the laps all the time, the consistency, but mentally just being able to, to keep in the zone, keep focus 100% for potentially an hour uh, in a car that's very difficult to drive on a track that's of course very difficult as well. Yeah, no, it's one of the things that I particularly love about this no, type of esports is no, the physical aspect of the fact that we get to look at these guys all pretty much replicating what real race drivers do. No, they're in the racing position, they're not sat there with a controller in their hand, they're doing it for real. And no, that's what I think separates this from a lot of them and that's what I personally like to enjoy uh, when I watch esports uh, from where I am. Well, Veloce, I believe, are preparing to make a stop. It looks like uh, uh, one of the drivers off stage is getting ready to come in, and uh, second in for them will be Noah Schmitz, I believe. So uh, and Noah Schmitz will jump in uh, the rig once uh, James Baldwin jumps out. We're getting towards the uh, near the end of the lap now, so uh, any second now, we uh, uh, in a few, few moments, we'll see Veloce come in, uh, and then we will... Uh, We'll see Noah Schmitz uh, jump in the rig. They're just coming up towards uh, Indianapolis at the moment. Uh, at the moment, a, a good gap. James Baldwin has put in a, a good stint here and uh, has given uh, his teammates uh, a good gap to work with. But uh, this race has got a long way to go in it, hasn't it? We can see Jota up to second. Of course, they're yet to stop. But uh, that just shows how well Sean Arnold is doing for them uh, to recover. Yeah, and you think, though, he's made that gap come down whilst also having to overtake people and come from the back, you know, jostling with other cars, and then he's obviously utilised the clean air when he's got the opportunity to do so. So a great job from him. He'll be looking to you know, carry on with that, as I think Aaron's now on the stage having a chat with him to see whether they're looking at coming into the pits as well. Because obviously we're getting end of lap 15. I don't know if they can actually go another lap and still have enough time for all their drivers to do the required stint length. So we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that as they come towards the end of the lap. Well, unless we miss the stops, I believe there's still around five or six teams yet to come in unless we've missed one or two uh, but uh, Veloce and Jota are two of those that have uh, yet to stop so uh, BP Gaming I think another one as well they have not yet stopped but they are on stage and BP Gaming are about to do their pit stops it looks like Patrick Becking uh, is about to jump in the seat for them but uh, we go back to Veloce who are pulling in the pits now and indeed they do come in so James Baldwin has brought the car home in the lead. That's all he can do now. His stint has been completed uh, and they will do their driver changeover. So jumping in for Veloci then uh, will be uh, Noah Schmitz. So Noah Schmitz jumps into the rig. The 20 year old from Germany finished P5 at the uh, 2018 Forza RC. 
and also we have a uh, change going on for the Jota team as well. So the Jota team also making their stop. Aaron, Mark Aaron Martin Pilkington uh, now jumps in for them. So uh, a very good recovery from Sean Arnold. I think it's fair to say did a very, very good job. Uh, and now Aaron jumps in. Yeah, both drivers there, the Fulham Velocity and Jota, both featured in the uh, the finals from last year. So they're obviously very experienced in this kind of scenario. It'll be interesting to see how they get on and how quickly they get up to speed. Yeah, well, there we go. Just coming out of the pits now uh, is uh, uh, Veloci, and uh, they'll go through the Dunlop chicane there. This is now lap number 16 uh, of uh, 32. And see where they come out exactly uh, onto track. So uh, Veloci now do their stop. They're in the lead. Williams second. Jean Lacy Esports Academy are third. Lazarus are fourth. Jota are fifth. VP Gaming are sixth. Lightspeed Esports are seventh. Team Highlands are next. And it's Radicals, Big HK, Fordzilla and Team FGTR. That is the order as it stands as we hit the halfway stage of the race. We are on lap number 16 of 32 now. And Veloce carry a lead of eight seconds at the moment. So their lead has extended over the pit stops as well. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty impressive at the halfway stage. I mean, they'll be looking at that. I think the car's behind them thinking that's an awful lot of time to make up over the next half of this race. But they've got to do it. Winner takes all. Veloce in prime position. Well, we're looking at Veloce at the moment. James Baldwin has been in the rig for 15 laps and left it with an eight-second lead. And Louise Beckett is with him now. Smell from James. You put in a great run there. Yeah, it was good. Uh, it was a long one, but yeah, we made the gap to second, and uh, I, I think Virus and Hayden are yet to go. So, we're positive, definitely. Uh, well, how much did the conditions make a difference to you, or maybe to the next driver? A lot, because the vision goes because it's cloudier and it's foggier. Uh, it didn't quite start raining, but it's less grippy and you can't see as much so to a driver that's not great i think i got out at the right time because if it starts raining you have to adapt so i just said to virus before the race it's probably going to rain on your stint so it's not yet but it's going to soon i think so he's just got to try and manage it now yeah he's got to adapt but that's endurance racing thank you thank you back to you chris been done and now it's over to his teammates to see what they can do as well this race is far from finished though eight and a half seconds is the gap back to Williams and then behind that we have the Jean Lacy Esports Academy so uh, Williams have got themselves up into second uh, over the pit stops uh, they have also stopped as well and uh, VP Gaming I believe have just completed theirs too so uh, I'm not sure if uh, Radicals and Team Highlands Racing have done theirs yet or if they have then they will be about to uh, but that's pretty much uh, everyone uh, completing their pit stops now so uh, first round of stops done now we uh, wait for the second round of stops and we're halfway through the race uh, and at this point harry i guess it's uh, a good time to ask you what's been your what's been your thoughts over the first half of the race I mean, Veloce have been impressive, of course, you know, out in the lead, you know, coming from second, minding the time. Also, we've heard from James saying that like, the conditions changing really you know, played a big part. And when that happened, he was the one who stepped up, made the overtake happen, and has now made the lead what it is. So that's very impressive. Obviously, we've got the Williams guys who I think will be OK with what's happened. I mean, they won't be too happy with the gap to the leaders, but considering what happened to them on the first lap of going wide and then fighting their way back to second currently, although they've got John Lacey Esports Academy for a close company, if those two start battling, that might be game over. And you know, can know take their uh, not foot off the pedal essentially but you know they've got a bit more of a breathing you know, gap because these guys are going to start battling cost themselves time these guys need to work together Williams and John Lacey as well they need to work together and not cost each other time battling which hopefully for their sake they will do we might end up in a three-way battle but at the moment they're looking comfortable well, I, I mean I don't mean to say this to insult the ability of any of the Veloce drivers but it only takes one mistake doesn't it for things to change you know one small off uh, breaking with a, a wheel on the grass or that could send you around or anything like that any small mistakes and then it's game on again isn't it so at the moment they may be comfortable but they uh, they're still going to keep focused for another 16 laps yeah we've heard james again though 
referencing the weather coming in, and they're expecting rain on uh, Noah's stint. So oh. as we've got the Williams car going wide, John Lacey looking up the inside, but can't make it there. But there'll be enough prime position to pick up that slit screen down the mole sand. But yeah, I think the thing we need to look out for now is going to be if and when that rain hits. Well, we will look out for that. John Lacey Esports Academy at the moment is sitting there in third place, but surely they could go into second place here. They've got the long mole sand straight to do it, and uh, with no chicanes, it is a very long straight. Uh, indeed, Williams just ahead of them, making that mistake just before the straight, and that's allowed uh, John Lacey Esports Academy to float back up. Then we have Lazarus, then we have Jota, BP Gaming, Lightspeed, Team Highland Racing, Radicals, BHK, Fortilla, and Team FGTR. That is the full order at the moment. We are on board with third place, John Lacey Esports Academy. It's Williams uh, ahead of us at the moment. Not closing in as much as I'd expected to, but uh, they're certainly close enough to be keeping the pressure on as we get closer to the breaking point. Absolutely, now I expected them to close right up, but maybe the setup's coming into play. Maybe the Williams guys have got a bit of a lower drag velocity on the car to help them down this part of the circuit, which is why they obviously Constantine are up towards the back end of the circuit when all the corners come into play. But they're, they're inching closer, and I don't know if they're going to be close enough into the breaking zone. They'll be a brave one if they are, but I think they've. Uh, and then they oh, are going to go They're going to they do it. Gonna they're going to throw one down the inside. Brilliant stuff there. And that could be a change for a second unless we see the Williams car appear back ahead. And we do. Well, it was worth a go there. The Jean Lacy Esports Academy uh, almost had everyone cheering here uh, around the stage. But uh, a good attempt of a move. It was uh, almost a dress rehearsal. I wonder if next time they'll give it a go. The Jean Lacy Esports Academy sitting third for the time being. And we've got more battling going on uh, behind this uh, just outside of the top five uh, I believe it is Lightspeed versus VP Gaming uh, at the moment Team Highlands Racing is uh, uh, off the back of this so uh, really this is uh, just a two-way fight no other teams really around these guys at the moment so uh, Lightspeed Esports it is uh, ahead of us we go back then a uh, little oh and a little bit of a a breeze with the barrier there. This is the battle for second place once again. The Jean Lacy Esports Academy uh, just making a little bit of contact with the barrier out of Arnage, but they've just about got away with it. Williams then escaping in second place. So just that one small mistake, and you can see the damage uh, it has done, Harry. It's allowed Williams now to uh, just break away, and uh, they can now not be so nervous going to the first part of the lap, knowing that they have kind of broken the toe after that mistake the mole sand strength. Absolutely, as you mentioned earlier, now, it's all about keeping your focus and not making the mistakes, and although it was a small mistake, it's cost them a fair bit of time, but at least they didn't end up clipping that tyre wall no, too heavily, because we've seen what kind of damage it can do, and uh, previous to this race, uh, it can really destroy it completely if you're, if you're unlucky enough, but they live to fight another day, they're not quite within the range that they would like to be, but plenty more laps to go to get back in there, and then see what they can do about, obviously, for lots of you guys up front as well, it capped eight seconds, so that's kind of done a fraction, it's not quite as high as it was, it was in the high eight seconds and now down to eight seconds flat, so maybe that's something to keep an eye on uh, for the Williams guys, obviously Isaac next to me, and uh, they're in the rig doing what he does best, no, he's a very capable driver, a bit like James Baldwin in, yeah. in essence, no, the idea that you can hop in many different genres of you know, uh, esports and motorsport sim races, and he seems to excel in anything that he goes in, so very talented on the same aspect as James there, and so doing a good job in second at the moment. We go back on board then with uh, Jota now we skip on board with. We can see Lazarus uh, ahead and uh, Aaron Martin Bilkington there closing in uh, on uh, fourth place here. This is brilliant stuff from Jota. Lazarus uh, just ahead of him. At the moment they've got Nathan Tate uh, in the seat. This could be a brilliant, this would be a brilliant performance if Jota can get even further higher uh, than fifth. Let's not forget this is an invitational uh, event. All these teams are here because they are very capable and uh, very capable of winning this event and qualifying through to the Le Mans Esports Series uh, Super Final. I'm sure many of them we will see here and there. You can see uh, Aaron Martin Pilkington for Jota there just uh, sitting in the rig uh, as they go on to the straight. Now, to get up to fourth place, that would be some achievement. And then from there, they've still got uh, plenty of time to go. They've still got. Uh, uh, Jacob Bokert yet to get in the seat as well and we all know how capable uh, he is uh, when he jumps in a rig so Jota could have a really good result here. Yeah absolutely it's what we said towards the start of the show is that they've got a very strong drive lineup obviously the start of the race is very unfortunate but that lineup they've got is 
arguably one of the strongest here, so their abilities individually to so fight back from that is going to be what might carry them through. So they're currently fifth, looking at fourth place. Then after that, there is quite a big gap you know, ahead to the, the next of the top three, but you've got to be in it to win it. And if those top three suddenly start closing up and start squabbling, as we keep saying, the joke car could end up finding themselves on the back of that trio, making it a quartet, and who knows what will happen at that point. They've just got to keep their head down. Aaron's no, a very capable driver, as you've mentioned, you know, doing the job that he needs to at the moment, and we'll see if they can make any progress into fourth place anytime soon. Well, they're getting closer, aren't they? And uh, there's definitely cars up the road in their sights as well. There goes Veloci, the uh, and then behind that, I'd say the four teams behind are fairly close together. We'll uh, get a better view, I'm sure, next time they hit the straights. There we can see uh, the uh, Veloce driver just uh, getting a little bit out of shape, and I'm sure that was uh, coming through uh, Indianapolis. That is Noah Schmitz, uh, who's in the seat for them at the moment. But uh, Williams then have a bit of a gap over Sean Lacey and Williams. But Jota, only a couple of seconds behind uh, third place, it seems here. So Jota uh, are staring at a potential top three finish uh, coming back from last place so this is really good stuff at the moment Lazarus is ahead of us we go on board with Jota now and just ahead uh, of that is third place so uh, great stuff here we'll stay with stay on board with Jota for a little bit shall we as we come up towards the course curve yeah crucial part of the you know, circuit in this one, all the high speed stuff, the car doesn't really like doing cornering at the best of times, like, no, when you have to pitch it in like you do here. So it's all about getting the weight transfer to get the cornering speed maximised. As you see, that's why you see the cars all wagging their tail on the exit. The drivers are quite aggressive on their turning to get that weight over the front axle, get it turned in nicely, and then they'll deal with the rear end on the exit. That's not a problem for most of them. Um, you see, the angle of the car looks like it's like, man, that's how you've got to drive the car, that's how you've got to be quick. And uh, especially the slow speed fine chicane, it doesn't like that a lot uh, either. But the Molsan, it quite likes that. I I'm sure many people who have tried try, driving this car, for people like me anyway, I think I do one lap and then uh, get on something else. But uh, it might feel like they're doing the wrong thing getting out of shape. But that, is, that as you said, that's exactly what they've got to do to, to go quick. It's an old car, and that's how they were meant to be driven essentially. You know, they don't have the modern aerodynamics and tyres and brakes and suspension that you know, we've become accustomed to. They are what they are. It's a car that's over 50 years old at this point, and you've got to drive it like how it was built, essentially. You know, you've got to use those parts to your advantage, and you can't drive it like a modern car because it won't like it when you do that. You've got to sort of manhandle it, and you'll see. You know, when you get the shots of the guys they're driving, you'll see how aggressive and how sort of soaring at the wheel they are, almost. You know, to keep it balanced because it does it, it bucks and kicks at every opportunity. So all credit to these guys for taming it the best they can, especially when they're racing wheel to wheel. Well, here we go. This is the battle for third place. Now, John Alacy Esports Academy is ahead of us. We are on board uh, with Lazarus at the moment, who are just trying to close in a little bit out of shape there for Lazarus before Tetch Rouge. So that's going to cost them a little bit of time as we go on to the Molsan straight. So uh, Lazarus will just drop out of, uh, we'll get a toe, I'm sure, but uh, they just dropped back slightly. So uh, let's see if how, how much they can close in down this straight then. There we can see. Uh, the Williams uh, eSports driver Isaac Price and uh, just behind him there is the John Alacy eSports driver of Danilo Santoro so uh, coincidentally they are right next to each other on stage as well and here comes the John Alacy car it's uh, getting closer and closer then and it's going to go to the outside there uh, of the Williams car as we uh, head down the straight then in fact that's the Lazarus car isn't it apologies I'm going past at the uh, John Alacy Esports Academy team so uh, despite that small mistake Lazarus have been able to close in and they've got past John Alacy Esports Academy no problem yeah the Molsan doing what it does you now you pick up the speed stream from such a long way back that by the time you get to the car in front you pick up so much over speed from them that you just sail by them in a straight line it's, it's very rare that you'll end up being stuck side by side unless you know to tell going on to the Molsan in the first place so it's always better to actually be further behind because you then get a bigger stitch from effect as we're closing up quite severely under braking, just about taking avoiding action to avoid the rear of the Lazarus car. We can now look back at the John Lacey car, has got a great exit, pulling to the inside, and they'll be side by side down towards Indianapolis. Yeah, good drive in there from John Lacey, just having to pull to the outside uh, to make sure they didn't clatter into the back of the Lazarus car, but uh, John Lacey are looking to fight back up the road. There is the Williams car. Thankfully for them, they have a little bit of a gap over this because this is going to become a three-way battle, I'm sure, with Jota closing in all the time. There you can see Jota just behind. They're now all in the same picture as we come through Indianapolis for the 19th time of 32. And Lazarus having to go a little bit defensive. The John Lacey car 
closes in on the exit into Arnage we go now. Heavy braking zone, of course, the slowest corner on the circuit. And the Jean Lacy car gets even closer then as we head down to the Porsche curves. Joe's are going to be loving what they're seeing here. This is going to be a great three-way battle as we are in the second phase of this race. One more driver for each team still to jump in. Those pit stops, I'm sure, are only a few laps away. Uh, but at the moment, we'll enjoy this battle for third place. Absolutely, you know, three of them going hammer and tongs, so the Jota car will probably be hoping that what happened earlier in the race is, is similar to this occasion where they, they came up beyond two cars and both those sort of almost fell off the track as they approached them and yeah. through they went. Obviously, I don't think that's going to be the case with these guys, unfortunately, for Jota, but they'll have to pass them with a, a good overtake. I imagine they Lazarus and Williams, both very experienced drivers if behind the wheel. They're not going to you know, make any mistakes, I don't think, when it comes to pressure from Jota. Here we go, then, down towards the Porsche Canes. Just up the road, we're on board with Jota, but just up the road is Lazarus and the Jean Lacy Esports team as they now head into the chicanes. Jean Lacy Esports team directly ahead of us, Lazarus just a little bit further ahead in third place. Down the straight uh, we go, and uh, behind in sixth place, some way behind is Lightspeed, then it's DP Gaming, Team Highland Racing, Radical, BHK, Fortilla and Team FGTR. That is the full order at the moment. If the race were to finish now, the team invitational would be won by Veloci and they would be the team that takes a ticket to the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final with it. Of course, they won that uh, Le Mans Esports Series Super Final uh, last year, the first Super Final that we held. This is now season number two of the Le Mans Esports Series. And, uh, well, it would be a, a real shame and kind of strange that they weren't there so uh, I'm sure they're going to be desperate to take the chance to go through here as they are not racing in the pro team series which is the only other way for uh, any pro team to qualify of course there will be two wild cards but uh, uh, qualifying through and knowing you have that qualification is always much better of course, no, especially when you know that this is your only opportunity. You know, they'll be so thankful that they're in the position they are, they're leading the race with a somewhat healthy gap at this stage of the Vlachi team, knowing that if they don't get it here, then their chances, unless they get into the wildcard selection, they're not going to be in the final. Um, that'll be heartbreaking for them, so they're in prime position. They'll be very happy with the way things are going at the moment, but the race isn't over until they cross that checkered flag line at the end. Well, here come Jota then. They got a great run out of Tetrouge, and they've just gone down the inside, or pulled alongside the Jean Lacy Esports uh, Academy car, shall I say, and they've gone through very, very easily. So Jota are up into fourth place. Can they stay there, though, because uh, there's still some length of this straight to go, and the Jean Lacy car, I'm sure, will be keen to fight back as we get towards the heavy braking zone at Mulsanne Corner. This is a little bit further back down the field. This is Fordzilla we are looking at. We're trying to get into 10th place ahead of BHK, so uh, we haven't seen much of Fordzilla. They've run into problems during the race, but uh, they're on somewhat of a recovery, I think it's fair to say now, uh, and they are trying to get past uh, BHK. Uh, we didn't quite see the end of what happened in our battle for third place, but we uh, will return to that shortly. In the meantime, we're going to stay with this. This is uh, Fordzilla closing in on BHK. Can they get up into 10th place? BHK uh, will, I'm sure, try and go a little bit defensive as we now cut back to the battle uh, within the top five. There you can see the Jean Lacy Esports Academy car. Jota is ahead. Jota trying to get past Lazarus for third place. And under braking, Jota, well, just, getting a, just going a little bit too late on the brakes. And... Uh, finding themselves having to move to the middle of the circuit there just to, I think, try and extend uh, their run to the corner. If anything, uh, under the braking zone, I think they were a little bit concerned that they were going to run straight into the back of the Lazarus car and almost force themselves into an overtake. But in the end, Jota stay behind uh, in fourth place. Lazarus remaining third, and this is the Jean Lacy Esports Academy car in fifth. Yeah, I think Aaron Martin filtered in behind that. Uh, no, Jota will really give him the, the sign of intent to the Lazarus car they're sort of showing the mirrors perhaps yeah showing yeah, the nose and going point. don't forget I'm here and I'll be past you soon I'm probably what he's, he's pretty saying to himself in the cockpit but it's what you've got to do you've got to try and make the driver ahead of you into a mistake if you can force them into that uh, because they're overtaking unless you've got the slipstream effect which we know is powerful that's sort of your only real chance and if you can force a mistake it becomes an awful lot easier yeah, that's a very good point you know, I'd, I'd had a feeling it was late on the brakes but uh, I, I think you're, you're exactly right there just uh, 
trying to show, show himself in the mirrors, trying to make that car big in the mirrors. We go back to this battle between Fordzilla and BHK. Team FGTR just in the background as well, so a three-way fight it is uh, for 10th place. We're on board with BHK. Uh, Fordzilla, I think, might be two are inside. No, they're not. They've just uh, touched back in behind. So Team Fordzilla uh, remain in 10th in place at the moment. I don't know what's happened to Radicals, but they have dropped down the order so I don't know if they've had some problems somewhere but uh, uh, we'll confirm that when we know it for now we'll go back to fourth place which is the Jota car Lazarus is just ahead of us and Jota surely are thinking of that Molksand straight surely already lining that move up uh, in their head is Aaron Martin Pilkington and just as we cut away it looked like we could have been side by side there we have someone doing their second stop and indeed Joe to go down the inside through Ted Truge and they go into third place Lazarus having to run off the circuit but that is move complete so brilliant move there from Jota however now Harry they have to try and defend all the way down the straight Lazarus may just come sailing back by again it'll be a worry in that cockpit for the Jota car for sure you know you're pretty hoping that he's forced them wide enough and you know, compromise their run enough to make sure they're not going to pick up the slipstream and get that overspeed effect to come back at them but I think they're going to be within that range and come the, the, the hairpin they might be side by side yet again well let's uh, stick with it looks like BHK are just about to complete their second and uh, what I'm sure will be their final stop uh, so this is the Jota car now in third we wait to see if the Lazarus car will appear at any point there is the Lazarus car it's getting closer it's getting closer the braking zone will be coming up shortly as well are they thinking about a dive down the inside I wonder Lazarus now uh, having to move to the inside you can see the Jota car just trying to block off any attempt from the Lazarus car to go by just trying to force the Lazarus car to the outside but uh, Lazarus are going to stay where they are until the braking zone at least now heavy on the brakes will that Lazarus car try and dive down the inside no sensibly I'd say stays behind for the moment so Jota hold on to third place and now they're going to try and chase down Williams in second yeah strange on that it looked like they had massive overspeed of the Lazarus car yeah it's sort of hit almost a buffer behind the Jota car when it got within a certain distance then lost all that extra speed it had and then just sort of sat there not being able to do anything and obviously at that point it wasn't close enough for the, the late braking manoeuvre either and again at this point it looks like the Jota car pulling away down the straight so again it might be set up related that we're, we need to take care of to see the spits of flame from the exhaust on the back here we go we're on board with Jota you can see the uh, Lazarus car behind the John Lacy Esports uh, car behind that one and then in the background uh, we can see a uh, sixth place as well who's uh, just trying to close in uh, on this battle and his Lightspeed Esports VP Gaming uh, are in seventh so they've uh, dropped a few places unfortunately uh, since the start of the race but uh, the race is not over yet we're only about two thirds of the way through it so uh, still uh, uh, quite a way to go in this one it is a two hour race uh, in total so still a good 40 minutes uh, remaining in this one as uh, so there we can see uh, the Jota car with the Jean with the Lazarus car in the background and the Jean Lacy car uh, behind that now if you're in the Lazarus car and you potentially have the pace to ta challenge Jota do you just wait and see Harry to see what they can do uh, in terms of the gap to Williams which uh, for these guys and the quality of these guys is quite substantial good three seconds it is uh, but uh, do you just sit there if, and wait to see if they can do anything if you're Lazarus or do you think uh, no, you're not going to go back through and try and do all the hard work myself? It depends what opportunities present themselves. Now, if there's a, a clear opportunity, then you might as well go for it. But there's no point forcing something that's going to cost you a lot of time, even if you make the move. Obviously, the worst case scenario is going to be you go for a move, you've got to lots of time, and you also don't complete the move either. So um, they'll have to see what happens in the next day, half a lap or so, see what they want to do. But say, not to be defeatist but I think they'll be looking at that gap to Veloce and seeing it it's went from 8 seconds that I mentioned a few laps ago it's now up to over 10 seconds so it's looking ominous so at this point it's almost like you might as well go for every opportunity you get and then see what falls your way towards the end of the race rather than you know, sitting back and playing the long game because obviously there isn't that much left of the long game well one of well, I think one of those opportunities may just be about to come up because uh, it looks like the Jota cars had a, a bit of a tough run through the first part of this 22nd lap. This is Team Highlands Racing we go back to now. And I think they have just lost a place to Fordzilla. So Fordzilla go up into eighth place. That drops Team Highlands Racing down into ninth. So Fordzilla, who uh, 
have had a real tricky start to the race and now starting to uh, become a little bit more present in this race. They've uh, made a good few overtakes now. And next for them will be VPGaming.de. I don't know what the exact gap is to uh, VP Gaming, but uh, we'll try and find that out uh, in a little while as uh, this is the Jota Car once again with the Lazarus team behind uh, Williams just up the road. Williams with a nine second gap uh, to the leaders at the Lodge. So it doesn't look like any changes will come there anytime soon unless there is some sort of mistake. Uh, from the Velocity team. Likewise, Williams, they seem to be fairly comfortable in second place at the moment. Yes, yeah, so we just had a discussion on stage with uh, Aaron Martin Pilkton in the Joker and Jacob Bokert, who will be stepping into the seat. I guess they're trying to work out how many more laps they can get out of Aaron before Jacob's going to step in and make sure he's obviously got the 30 minute window that they need. So they're going to be looking at, I mean, we said it was like eight laps that they needed at least. So right. you're looking at lap 24 or whatever at the, at the latest around that sort of that time. So. We've got a car going wide there in the gravel, have we? We have. Oh, yes. Is that the John Lacey car? That was a good spot, actually. Yes, it was. So, yeah, good spot, Harry. So, John Lacey, uh, Esports Academy, drop down. A couple of uh, mistake there uh, at Molsan, running into the gravel, and they have dropped. Let's uh, pick up exactly where they've dropped to. I think it's uh, sixth place. Let's have a look. Yes, so sixth place now. Uh, they are. VP Gaming is next along uh, after that. So, uh, a shame for the John Lacey Esports Academy, but it just shows what one mistake can do and that is what we keep reminding you Veloce may have a good lead but if they do something like that then they will uh, find their lead completely vanishing of course you know it's part of an endurance race as well you know, obviously they're doing driver changes anyway but fatigue does don't start to set in obviously there is a physical aspect to this esports as we've mentioned so it does become quite easy their mental lapse concentration of course is always a possibility as well and then when you throw in racing with other cars and no close uh, no quarters combat with them, it can be you know, difficult to spot every single braking zone, every single turning marker, and with the weather changing again, it's like it's brightened up a bit, so it looks like that rain hasn't arrived, thankfully, for a lot of these guys, I think. But again, you've got to adjust to those conditions when they you know, present themselves. Well, to remind you, of course, this is the Autosport Teams Invitational. The winner of this will qualify through to the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final as one of nine uh, pro teams. Uh, the rest of them, six of them, will come uh, through the Pro Series and two wild cards as well. That is the situation. Veloce in the lead at the moment. For now, though, we're going to head down to Louise with Tobin Lee. Yes, I'm with Tobin Lee. Um, just looking at the front runners now. This is an invitational round, and Veloce and Williams are both in for the win. Jota are in the series, so they can come back and try again. Yeah, so what we have is in the top two, we have, uh, we have Williams and Veloce. And the thing is, is that whichever team out of them doesn't win, they, that's it for them. We will not see them again this year. So it's a full-on knockout. But if we look at Jota, um, they'll, be, they'll be okay, to be fair, because they've got loads of other rounds to go. It's just the way that the format works. And it will be interesting to see how that battle and how the pressure on Williams' shoulders develops. We've still got 10 rounds to go, or 10 laps. Yeah, still plenty of time for Williams to uh, sort, <laughs> well, sort their position out and, and close that gap. Thanks, Tobin. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Tobin. Right, we just had a, a stop from the Jean Lacy Esports Academy. Giovanni De Salvo has jumped in for them. BHK have also made their second stop. Uh, Alessandro Ottaviani is now in for them. So John Lacey with that stop go down into seventh place. And they will now see what they can do in this third stint. Of course, they just had that mistake which saw them lose a place. Uh, but uh, more stops going on. Fordzilla uh, make their stop as well. They had a, a good second stint there actually in a, a deserved round uh, of applause uh, for uh, Anthony Deal who has brought them back up in to the top 10 and well into the top 10 as well. Miguel Molina will now try and hold that position uh, and maybe make uh, a couple more as well. So Fordzilla have now made their stops for the race and they're going to be going to the end. A good second stint from them. Absolutely, you know, they've done what they what they could with the, the situation as it was. Obviously another pit stop that was down the line was the, the Radicals online making their final pit stop as well. Uh, so we'll see you know, how they get on again. It's all about the drivers acclimatising and getting used to the car as soon as they jump in. They can't afford to take a lap or two to get up to their temperature with the car. They've got to jump in and be on it from the get-go, which is always difficult. You know, There's no guarantee you're going to be able to make that happen. And if you do and get it wrong, then the consequences can be uh, quite severe. So that'll be Matt Beard then 
uh, if the Radicals did do their second stop. Here's the Williams Esports uh, team who are about to do their second stop uh, as well. So uh, Nico Wisniewski is about to jump in for them and uh, Nico will take us to the end of the race for the Williams team. Uh, we'll have a gap to chase and uh, at this point what's going to be going through the head of, of, of Nico knows that uh, there is a, a quite a substantial gap to chase down but uh, it, it's very well, it's doable in uh, the amount of time we still have left. It is, and there's a story that I think we need to tell regarding Hayden and coming in for the Veloci squad. Unfortunately, with Veloci Storm not being able to make it, so when yes. Hayden comes in, there's obviously you know, uh, something we'll go into when that happens, when the pit stop's made, yeah. I think, to explain to the viewer what the situation is. But I think that might be the crumb of comfort that you know, Williams are holding on to at the moment to think we've got that potential opportunity, depending on how it goes. Um, so they're in the best position, as we mentioned before. You know, you've got to be in the, like, the right position to pick up the crumbs when they when they become available and that might be the case as uh, Hayden's walking up now looking like we might be seeing a pit stop from the race leaders anytime soon. Well, let's talk about that then. If you, uh, you know, uh, Harry, you know exactly the story here. So just tell us what happened to the Veloce team this week and why we're seeing Hayden here. So my understanding is Veloce Storm was meant to be here racing with uh, Noah and James, but unfortunately those circumstances meant that wasn't the case. I don't know the full story of that, so I won't oh, comment on well, it. Uh, but uh, it was, but his passport was stolen. Ah. Well, that one, that, that's, um, yeah. that's obviously going to be an issue for someone who's obviously coming abroad to compete in this you know, series, as we can see Hayden getting in now. So that means Hayden, you know, because of how local he is here, within basically the day, he's been called upon to jump in to make sure they can actually compete in this. Otherwise, they wouldn't have a third driver and wouldn't be able to take part. So you know, he's well vested in driving games. Forts is probably not his you know, specific platform. So he's jumped in last minute to help the team out, I mean, getting all the encouragement and coaching from his teammates to make sure he's up to speed as possible. Um, but again, it's the case of we're going to see how up to speed he is and whether he can hold on to that lead that's been built by his teammates. It's a big ask, you know, it's, he's going to do a fantastic job either way. Now, to step in last minute like this in this kind of environment is, you, know, you have to tip your cap to him and say, you know, well done. But we need to see where he's actually going to finish in this final stupid race. Well, Hayden is a, a Veloce Esports presenter and content manager. Uh, he, he had one day's notice for this event, so uh, he didn't put in the preparation that everyone else perhaps on this stage has and that could be a, a big difference and as you said I think Williams are going to know that now and they're going to think that this could be a chance for us in this Thursday and that's taken nothing away uh, from Hayden but uh, knowing that the, the preparation has not been able to be put in from the third driver I, I think this is going to either be a very close finish or a very impressive performance from Hayden to, to hold a gap like that uh, considering how little uh, amount of preparation he's had and already making the Veloce team a little bit nervous there as they went fully sideways through Tetru to see the Veloce drivers getting very nervous so if you're around and watching or if you're tuning in online this race could get very very interesting over the next five to ten minutes with Veloce leading once all the stops have been completed but Williams on the chase. Yeah, no, they'll be looking and thinking now is the time. We've waited the mo most part of this race for this moment to happen. Now we've got our seas on it, if we can. So uh, they've both made the final pit stop. They're both on track now. So we're going to watch that gap closely if we can, see how you know, quickly it comes down. Obviously, if it comes down at all, we do expect it to. Um, and then see how many laps are left and try and work out when we might be expecting a, a change for the lead if it comes. Well, here we go. There you can see the Veloce car at the moment. We're still waiting to see pit stops from some teams. I think Lightspeed Esports, something's happened with them. I can see some frustration coming from them. I wonder if they've actually had an off. They were uh, in the... They actually inherited the lead once all the stops have been uh, completed. So I'm not too sure uh, what has just happened to them, but uh, it does look like they've uh, hit some problems, I think, somewhere. But uh, they are also about to make their second stop as well. Uh, we do pick up Velocity who are behind VP Gaming. They are yet to make their second stop. Their third driver is just preparing, uh, which is uh, Bell Echo El Cabli. Get there in the end. I asked him about three times as well. <laughs> uh, but uh, they're about to make their second stop, uh, and that will clear the track for Veloce and Hayden to just try and get his foot down and uh, try and hold the gap to Williams. We'll check in on what the gap is to Williams very shortly, of course. Uh, the two leaders have both made two stops, so uh, we'll uh, know exactly what the gap is uh, once that comes up for us. Yeah, so this might actually be best case scenario for Hayden as he's locked up and gone wide. Oh at, no, oh, no that's he's a in the gravel. Big, big mistake from Veloce team there, running wide, and that was into Molsan corner, and 
into the gravel and that's going to bring the gap down. Now, before the stops had been made, the gap between Veloce and Williams was eight seconds and uh, I'd say that's going to at least take away a set, at least two seconds, I think. Absolutely, so we can't see the Williams car in the background just yet, so you know, that's not an immediate danger as yet, but as I say, it's difficult with Hayden at the best of times, let alone when you know, you're know you in this position of leading a race and you know you've got to hold on essentially for what feels like forever. It's eight laps essentially, but it's going to feel like an awful lot more for him. Um, but you know, we'll see how this unfolds and how he you know, gets his head down and deals with the next few laps. So it was I was going to say it was probably ideal for him to be following the VP gaming car because yes. it would have given him a sighter, but it shows how much I know. <laughs> Well, there we go. There is Lightspeed Esports. Uh, they actually have the fastest lap of the race, by the way. So uh, uh, brilliant stuff uh, from them. They uh, a very good stint, I have to say, uh, from Callum Lawrence. I believe it was uh, Callum who uh, may have put in the fastest lap as well. But Kian Butler uh, now jumps in and uh, Kian Butler will take them to the end of the race. They did come in in the lead. Of course, they weren't in the lead once the stops uh, began, but uh, uh, they went into the lead once uh, the guys ahead of them stopped. Also stopping over to uh, my left is VP Gaming. They've just made uh, their second stop as well. So finishing the race uh, for them will be uh, El Cabli. Just going to go to the second thing this time. Right, let's get a, a gap update for uh, Veloce uh, and for Williams. Let's see what the gap is between our two leaders. Uh, it is 2.6 seconds. Wow, so it is shrunk from around eight seconds to just 2.6 seconds. Lap number 25 of 32. We still have quite a way to go in this one. Now, these are two teams, of course, that are trying to uh, win their place into the Ron Esports uh, Series uh, Super Final as well. They're both not competing in the Pro Series, both big names, so this is their only chance to qualify. That means we're going to have, if it's a straight head-to-head -head between Veloce and Williams, we're going to have a big name missing when we get to the Super Final. Absolutely, that's referencing what Tobin said a little earlier about the fact that you know, both these teams are, are big names in the world of you know, esports and sim racing itself. So the fact that we're going to be missing one of them in the Super Final potentially is going to be... Uh, a big shot to the system for the team, whoever it turns out to be. Well, I'm sure if we go back to the leaders, we'll pretty much be able to see that uh, Williams can probably now see the Veloce car in sight. And it's quite interesting that they happen to have been placed at either side of uh, where we are commentating. So we have Veloce to our right and Williams to our left. So if you're looking at the stage to the right of us is the Williams team, to the left of us is the Veloce team. And there are very nervous faces in front of me. You can see the Veloce guys looking a little bit worried, whereas the, the Williams guys, definitely uh, some adrenaline pumping down there. They seem to be uh, pretty happy with where they are at the moment. However, they are not in the lead yet, so uh, they still have some work to do. Yeah, there's a lot of movement coming from that Williams race, so they're <laughs> obviously trying real hard to get that car around the racetrack as quickly as possible. It's a two and a half seconds now. So it's, it's coming down slowly. Obviously, we just had the Mars on straight, so that would explain why it's not. Oh, we've got a car off. That's light speed esports, I have to say. Uh, with, the, with the session that was just put in there from Callum, they set the fastest lap. They were actually in third place, but Jota now go into third place. So that was a change, and I apologize to the light speed guys that we didn't pick up on straight away. But light speed came out in third place. Uh, that mistake now drops them to fourth place. And if a battle is to kick off up ahead, uh, well, Jota are only six seconds back from Veloce and four seconds back from Williams. And we've got a battle going on here. This looks like John Alacy versus Lazarus into Indianapolis. We're on board, I think, with the Lazarus car. And up the inside there, John Alacy. Brilliant move from the John Alacy esports team. They go up another position. Lazarus dropping down a position. They're going to have to complete the move down into Arnage. We're on board with Lazarus now. And that's the John Alacy esports car going up into fifth place. I think that is now. So uh, brilliant driving there from the Sean Alacy team. They now go up into fifth and we're on board with Lazarus who are in sixth. This is turning into a very interesting last stint of the race. Absolutely, you can tell it's getting towards the end because they're just going for it. You know, trying to make moves into Indianapolis you know, is just ridiculous at the best of times, let alone when they're driving these kind of cars. And they make it work. You know, it is a credit to how good these drivers are. And especially you know, four of them in the same shot you know, suggests after 25 laps that they're absolutely on the limit. I think we do need to try and pick up our leaders because uh, surely it is getting uh, quite close now between the top two. And there it is, where the two leaders are side by side. Well, can you believe it? Veloce, who had once had an eight-second lead. There go Williams down the inside, and they take the lead of the Autosport Teams Invitational. 
Fantastic driving there. Williams go through there, locking up as we go into the four chicanes, but Veloce have dropped down to second place. It's a heartbreak for the Veloce team. They still got a few laps in this to go though, so Veloce have time to fight back, but Williams are now the new race leaders. The team that were off down at Molsan Corner on the first lap have got back, fought back, and they're now into the lead. Yeah, I think that was always going to be a case of when, not if that move was going to happen, and say it happened quite early on in the stint, which yeah, no, I'm sure Veloce would be quite disappointed with, but it's the way it is. You know, Jota are now you know, on, going to be chasing down that Veloce car, and if they can pass them as well, depending on how you know, easy Williams take it, now they're in the lead, but they don't need to take the risks of driving 110% everywhere. If they try and take their foot off the gas just a little bit, it might let Jota in with a sniff. And look in the background, there's the Jota car as well. The Jota car is starting to close in to remind you the Jota team dropped to 12th and last place at the very first corner from fourth on the grid. And they have fought back a brilliant stint uh, from Sean Arnold and then Aaron Martin Pilkington as well. I believe Aaron may have now swapped and Jacob Bokit is now uh, in the rig for them as well. Sorry, we slightly lost track of the pit stops while we had our lead change there. But Jacob Bokit in for them. I wonder if Jacob is going to have enough in the tank to try and close in. Williams, of course, very, very strong team. Likewise, Veloci. Are they too far behind, you think, to challenge for this lead, or is three seconds doable for them? It's absolutely doable. Now, if, he, if Jacob gets his head down, doesn't make any mistakes, and drives as well as he knows he can drive, we know he can drive, then he can absolutely make that happen, though. Not taking anything away from the Williams guys, obviously, no, they're very quick themselves, but it's so difficult to call. No, it's getting tense now. No, the last no, half dozen laps, you know, a small mistake is going to potentially cost you a place in the super final. We were once almost giving that ticket to Veloci to the. Uh, Super final, but now it could be anyone three, four, five teams perhaps. This is a battle going on between the Jean Alesi Esports Academy team and Lightspeed Esports as well. Lightspeed Esports were third. They made that mistake that dropped them to fifth place, but now they're trying to get through the fourth. They're on the outside there of the Jean Alesi Esports Academy. As we go down to Molsan Corner, the braking zone coming up any second now. Can they be brave around the outside? Can they? go around the outside of the John Alacy team. In fact, the John Alacy team run wide. Light, it's Lightspeed Esports trying to get back through. Just up ahead, Veloce have dropped to third place. Veloce look like they've dropped to third place. So Jota have gone through, and yes, they have. So there's confirmation. Jota into second, and the gap is coming down to Williams, it seems, as well. It was three seconds when we last checked in with it. Let's have a look at what it is now. We'll get that update for you in just a second. But behind Lightspeed Esports, I think, are past John Alacy Esports Academy, or are they into, into, into Indianapolis? We're on board with John Alacy, almost fully sideways there, just about managing to save it there. That was Lightspeed Esports going down the inside of the John Alacy Esports Academy team, and they've got through. So uh, Lightspeed Esports now up ahead of the John Alacy Esports team, and up ahead could be the battle for the lead very shortly. Yeah, celebrations in the crowd, and there's some fantastic car control to keep it pointing in the right direction. When it got that much opposite lock on, you do wonder if it's actually going to snap back in the position, but it did, and they managed to complete the move. And say, Jota have now got the position to, I think, knock themselves off the Christmas card list for two teams. The snow here with Veloce and Williams. Both the go, no, both those teams. This is their chance to get through, and Jota obviously in the pro teams championship as well. So they've got that opportunity to qualify, even if they get you no know, result here. Then yeah. they knock out both those two teams, which it, that's a, those are two big you know, scalps to take. That's a very good point, actually. Our pro team series, which Williams and Veloce are not taking part in, uh, gives the uh, 16 teams in that. The top six will qualify through. Uh, and as Harry said, Jota are actually second in that series at the moment. So really, they could just go through via that. But let's get straight back to the action uh, because it looks like the John Alacy uh, eSports team are trying to line uh, a move up on light speed, really. I have to think these teams should be really trying to work together here because up ahead could be a battle for the lead kicking off in the next lap or two. They're fighting each other, they're just dropping further back from the leaders. I think if they were to work together, they could find themselves in the battle for the lead come the end. Yeah, I mean, hindsight's going to be a wonderful thing when we look back at the end of it, but I think at this point in the race, it's sort of desperation starting to sink in. You know, when you're fourth and fifth, you, know, you think, if, well, I've got to go for absolutely everything. You know, I'd rather take track position than working together with someone, you know, as much you know, short-sighted it might seem at the time, I think that's the only real option they've got at this stage, you know, being quite late into the race. It's a big thing at stake, isn't it? The chance to go and race at the Le Mans 24 hour at the eSports Series a Super Final. That is the chance. We fly all the drivers out there, we put them up there, free tickets as well, and they race 
live at the Le Mans 24 hour. Imagine missing out on that. That is what it means to these guys. It is absolutely everything. And this, for some teams, is their only chance to do it. It's winner takes all and Veloccia dropping further down the field now, unfortunately. It looks like Lightspeed Esports are about to go down the outside. They are going to have to tuck back in for now, but this is a long straight for them to, uh, to make this move. And behind that as well, getting a double toe is the John Alesi Esports Academy team. They could be in third place by the time we get down to the end of this straight. We're on board with Veloccia for the time being. Lightspeed Esports choosing to go out of the toe for a little bit. I think they want to try and time this move uh, to perfection. So they're trying to stay behind for most of the straight and then get by right at the end of the straight. But they've got to be careful because currently they are leaving the door open for the John Alesi Esports Academy team. We've got the curve in the straight to come up yet. Yeah, and here come the John Alesi Esports Academy team. And they're getting the toe from the Veloci team, which is going to drag them by into fourth place. Into fourth place they go. And they're trying to get up the inside of Veloci. We could be three wide into Molsan corner here. It's lap number 27 of 32. And they're battling like it is the final lap. So John Alesi team up into fourth place or are they oh no veloce go off into the gravel who's going to emerge in third place it's going to be light speed esports i think that go into third place the john Alesi team in fourth and it's just getting worse and worse for the veloce team unfortunately so but you know with this race being a winner takes all it's sort of not game over essentially you know when uh, when williams passing for the lead but it doesn't necessarily matter that they're falling through the field at this stage. Obviously, the guys moving in the other direction are the ones who are going to be focusing the most on whether they can start catching the leaders. Because obviously, we mentioned that gap to the, the first and second was 3.3, I think, now 2.6. Yeah. So it is coming down. And with the amount of laps left, we might end up with a battle for the lead on the last lap. Yeah, I think we could. 2.6 in about a lap or two. It's come down by 7 tenths. So, well, we go back to this, though. John Alesi, Esports Academy, they're coming back into play. Lightspeed Esports likewise, they're four seconds behind the Jota team and six seconds behind uh, the Williams team who currently lead the way. They're fighting for that ticket to the Super Final uh, at the Le Mans 24 hour. And it's uh, a huge prize up for grabs. It's the Autosport team's invitational. Oh no, and running a little bit wide there. The John Alesi Esports Academy are just going to help themselves to third place there. Uh, the Lightspeed team running a little bit wide through the Porsche curves. And there goes the John Alesi team up into third place. Another mistake from the Lightspeed Esports team. Yeah, I mean, it's quite you know, surprising to see there's so many mistakes in such a short period of time. It is the end of the race, as we keep saying. I mean, it has been a long race, but these drivers are exchanging their stints, so it's not like they've got two hours worth of know wear and tear on them um, so it's a case of you can see the crowd now <laughs> literally biting fingernails as we head towards <laughs> the end well it's 2.3 seconds is now the gap Aaron Martin Pilkington you saw on screen uh, there with barely any fingernails left the gaps come down by three tenths in the last uh, last few corners uh, of the last lap so uh, Jacob Bokit who is in the rig for them is getting closer and closer and Jacob Bokit could turn this into a battle for the lead. And that's good to see the Williams team and the Jota team side by side next to each other with the Veloce team there as well. The sportsmanship, always a great thing in the Le Mans Esports Series. And the Lightspeed team jumping up and down in the background as well. Because I think they know there's a, a potential for them to get involved in a battle for the lead as well. The John Alesi Esports Academy team. And now just starting to pull away. Giovanni uh, De Salvo in for them at the moment. For Lightspeed Esports, it's Kean Butler. And uh, these guys, if there's a battle kicking off ahead for the lead, they could close in as well. So uh, we've got a, a very good few laps left. Five laps remaining we have. This is lap number 28 now of 32. And there we can see the Veloce team. Unfortunately for them, uh, they are now out of contention, I think it's fair to say after a couple of trips to the gravel. They've now got the Lazarus team behind them who are looking to get into the top five. Yeah, I think that was going to be a slam dunk any time soon, unfortunately, as you say, for the Lotte team. Um, you know, it's, it's all looking at the front now, isn't it? We're looking to see if Jota can finally get into that slipstream range, close up and really put the pressure on that Williams team. They start appearing in their rearview mirrors into the braking zones and making them think twice about which line they want to take. Um, and then obviously behind them third and fourth, we'll be hoping that they get together closer um, sooner rather than later, start squabbling and allow them to close up and hopefully they have a four-way fight. We have to reiterate uh, Hayden Gullis in for Veloce, not really one of their pro drivers even, he's uh, the, the, an esports presenter and content manager, here he is uh, up against the best in the world uh, and unfortunately 
he's, uh, we're just seeing how good the uh, top drivers in the world are. It's that little bit of difference, uh, and he's going to lose a place there to Lazarus, but only had one day's notice, no real time to do any testing, uh, bar the uh, few hours we had yesterday. Uh, and unfortunately, it was almost uh, inevitable in a way that this was going to happen, just because of the short notice, the, you know, the quality of the rest of the field. Oh no, who's that we've just gone by? That's, look, is that the Jean Lacey Esports Academy car we've gone by? Uh, let's have a look. Was that the Lightspeed car? I think it is. So the Lightspeed Esports at the same place at Molsan Corner taking a trip to the gravel and they now fall down into sixth place. That is a real shame. Now, um, they were fairly close to the Jean Lacey Esports Academy car. I'm not sure if that was just a mistake on their own or if there was any kind of incident. I'd hate to uh, uh, assume, that they was, assume that there was an incident, but uh, uh, unfortunately, Lightspeed Esports uh, may look back on this race if they are not to win it and feel that there could have been a, a chance that uh, went begging. Yeah, I think there's going to be a few teams to look back at this race. Well, if we didn't, didn't make that mistake there and we've done this a little bit differently and played the strategy a bit differently, they might find themselves no chance for the win because the teams that we've seen up front now battling are Williams, who we saw made the mistake on the first lap, and Jota, who were last are now no chasing them down. So other teams did have an opportunity here. It's what we mentioned, with a one-off race and a bit of lady luck, you can make something work. And at the moment, it's working for Williams. I think we need to check back in with the leaders because it looks like the gap is uh, coming down even more here between the Williams team and the Jokes team. Right, in fact, it's 2.6, so it's slightly gone up. So Williams are responding, uh, in fact. So uh, good driving from them in the last lap or so. We're looking at the Veloce team uh, at the moment who are uh, just uh, trying to hang on as much as they can, just trying to minimise the, the time that they are losing, because, of course, Hayden uh, in the seat for them is the, the content manager uh, for the team and a presenter as well, not uh, uh, on the level of the likes of uh, James Baldwin, uh, as well as uh, Noah Schmitz, who have uh, done the first two stints uh, for them. But uh, uh, that's uh, a shame for Veloci, but uh, they did have a, an eight-second lead. I think it was uh, at one stage. Well, uh, we're getting into the final few laps now. It's just four to go as they cross the line. And leading the way is still the Williams team. Jota, it may say Jota have only gained two places, but really they've gained 11. They've come all the way uh, from the back of the field and uh, they dropped all the way to 12th place and they've now worked their way to second. So a good 10 places gained for them in this break. Likewise, Williams, though, I think they were down in as low as seventh at the start after that mistake. Oh, no, that's the Lazarus team. I think that is uh, having a little bit of a spin. So the Lazarus team halfway going round. That's going to put Veloce back into fifth. Uh, and it just looked like a, a simple mistake for me there. Yeah, the car looks like it's all over the place. I don't know if they picked up damage somewhere or if it's just uh, lighting up the rear tyres and they've overheated and there's no grip there. But a disappointing mistake to make you know, this late in the race, obviously, is not really in the contention for the race win, so it's not you know, too damaging to their prospects at this stage, but just a bit disappointing on the personal level, I feel, for the, for the driver. Yeah, it's a shame that for Lazarus, but uh, this just goes to show you were talking about it earlier, Harry, you mentioned it, it's the mental fitness almost, if not make, trying not to make any mistakes, and the fatigue as well physically of you know, being in the rigs. They know that everyone's watching online. They know there's a massive crowd here uh, at the Autosport show as well. And sometimes that pressure for some drivers, it can work two different ways. Sometimes that makes the driver better and sometimes it, it can lead to one or two mistakes. Yeah, some people thrive on it. You know, they, they like the pressure and they like the all eyes on them to be able to go, look what I can do and they deliver. Whereas other people, you know, it doesn't work that way. It's a case of you know, they don't like all eyes on them because in the case of it, it might show up any mistakes they make and uh, it goes on a global scale. So. Yeah, it's, if you want to compete in this kind of no competition, though, you've got to either get used to it or they deal with it in a certain way that you find appropriate, because it's always going to be the case. I was going to ask you which one were you, but uh, the fact that you're here commentating means you're, you're probably the latter. You wanted, you wanted all eyes on you, so uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> I'll, I'll retract that question <laughs> straight away. Uh, but uh, the gap still staying at 2.6 seconds between Williams and Jota at the moment. And, uh, I w well, I wonder if this is a good response from Williams or if this is... A slight breather from the Jota team. I'd, I'd say it's probably the first. Uh, but Williams are just reacting now. They, they feel that a reaction needed to come with Jota bringing that gap down, and, and now they've put it in. And they're kind of trying to take the momentum out of Jota, aren't they? When you see a gap coming down like it was, you always find yourself driving even better and taking more curves in places, more runoff. You break that a little bit later. Once you can take the sting out of that with a reaction and extending the gap, then uh, sometimes that can. Uh, 
you know, re really as a driver chasing it can uh, really take a take a knock to you, can't it? Of course, you know, Williams have had the bit between their teeth. They came out after that final pit stop knowing what was ahead of them with the Veloce team and the Veloce driver. They would have known that was the opportunity to take the lead, so they probably you know, put the hammer down, got the times in, got the position, maybe done a few quick laps then, sort of taking it a bit easy to make sure they're you know, looking after the car and they're not putting themselves in any unnecessary risks. Jota obviously then got into second, closed the gap a bit, and I think Williams are now responding, as you mentioned, to say, no, we've got the pace, you're not coming any closer than two and a half seconds. In fact, we're going to try and pull a few, few tenths on you. But again, it's a credit to show you know, the, the front two. These laps are nearly four minutes long, and yet we're, we're squabbling over a tenth or two each lap. It's crazy. It's interesting. The Williams guys have stood behind the rig with Jacob Boker in from Jota. They basically just want to watch exactly what jo the Jota team are doing. They're not really uh, worried about kind of what their own driver is doing. He's, uh, actually just put his hand up there. I'm not sure if there was a slight mistake uh, from uh, Wisniewski there. And that's why he put his hand up. Uh, the gaps are looking to be the same, so uh, I'm not too sure what happened there. But it's interesting to see. They just want to watch the Jota car through literally every single corner. They don't want to know exactly what is going on. Uh, they kind of know that they're in good hands with Krasniewski. They just want to see any, everything Jota are doing. Absolutely. I mean, they, they know better than anyone what their driver can do, so that yeah. they know they're in safe hands. In case of looking at the opposition as to what they're throwing at them and they need to deal with. So if they see anything that needs to be reported to the driver, they get the opportunity to do so. But at the moment, they seem quite happy over there. They're not bothering their driver. It's just a case of get on and do what you can do. When would you say here comes a move, by the way, Lazarus after that mistake and now going to come down the inside and that was a good move completed there from Lazarus passing the Veloci team. They go back into fifth place with that move. I have to ask, ask you, Harry, when do you think the toe probably starts? Well, how close do you have to be to be in that toe going down more sand straight? Because really that's all it takes. It's not a 2.3 second gap, uh, is it? It's the gap to be in the toe and then the chase is pretty much been completed. Uh, you're going to be wanting to be within around a second and a half, I think, uh, you know, to be picking up any kind of effect, meaningful effect anyway. Um, obviously, with slip cream comes dirty air as well through the corners, and when they, you go up to loss and heaven and come back towards the start finish line, that's when you don't want to be in the slip cream because you've got all the corners there. So it's you know, either way it can work for you, but I think they'd rather be in it than not at this stage. You know, the fact we've got what, two and a half laps left pretty much and they're not yet within slip stream range, which means even if they did get to that point, moving even closer to get to an overtaking position, they're going to have possibly one chance to make it count if they can even get that. And the Jean Alesi team will just be hoping that something picks up ahead. The gap is now two seconds, by the way. Uh, so Jota are closing, and I hope we will have a look at them, perhaps an onboard with them in just a second, because I'd love to see exactly what the gap is between Jota and Williams uh, from an onboard point of view. So uh, uh, hopefully we can grab that for you in just a second. At the moment, we are on board uh, with Velocity, who of course are in sixth place, and uh, I think we'll, we'll be sixth at best unless anything is to happen ahead. But it's Jota the one that we're more interested in as the gap now reduces to 1.9 seconds between the two leaders so another four tenths or so and that will put them within region to uh, pick up a toe so there is Williams now where is Jota there they are so uh, hopefully we'll get an on board with them in just a second oh there was a little bit of a kick off there I think that was uh, Veloce getting a little bit out of shape perhaps Lazarus ahead or something similar for them but uh, when you can see, they can clearly see the car ahead now, Jota, that's just going to spur them on. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's going to be you know, almost twice as bad for the Williams guys to be at the front of it, knowing that gap's coming down. They're pushing as hard as they can, and the gap's still coming down towards the end of the race. It's like you're going to be sat there as a Williams driver thinking, what more can I do? What more can I do? Well, here we are. So there is Jota. We've been bringing you the gaps. There they are. Uh, that is how far ahead Williams are in terms of... Uh, uh, track length itself it's just under two seconds or at least that was the gap we'll uh, confirm if that still is the gap in just a second and here we go this is what we wanted Harry an onboard view as it comes down to 1.7 seconds now we're about to go on to the penultimate lap of this two-hour endurance race where the winner will pick up an entry to the Le Mans 24 hour the Le Mans eSports series super final big things at stake here and it looks like Jota are closing in now on the Williams team yeah, I mean, if you wanted to look at a face that told you I'm in the zone, you've only got to look at the Jota guys and the Williams guys. They're absolutely nailing it. There's no emotion on the face at all. They are so in the zone that you know they're, they're at the peak of their performance. They're 1.92 seconds now. So we're literally talking a tenth here and there could decide this race, depending on how quickly they can get into the slitching range, if at all. I have to say, that didn't look like the cleanest of ends to the lap there. The last sector of that lap looked a little bit... Uh, uh, messy at least I know Jota, Jacob Boker pushing like absolute crazy 
at the moment, but it didn't look like the cleanest of runs uh, through the last part of the lap. And again, look, taking a little bit of a tight line into the Dunlop chicane. I don't know if that's Jacob Boca doing exactly what's needed or if uh, that was indeed uh, a bit of a mistake. Likewise, Williams got it, got it, having a little bit of a lock up going into the chicane there. From what you've seen so far, Harry, what have you made of the driving between Williams and Jota in on this penultimate lap? I mean, the way the car handles, it's so difficult to tell whether the car's trying to step away or that's just how they're trying to drive the car because that's the quickest way to do it. As we've got you know, Williams team representatives on the t stage now talking to the drivers, obviously they're getting a bit concerned now. They've moved away from being behind the Jota guys' uh, rig to now coming out of the world with their, their driver on the back straight at the Mole Sand. I guess giving them bits of information about what the Jota car's doing and where they're possibly gaining. Well, that is Aaron Martin Pilkington for Jota looking very, very nervous. If you're around us here in hall number one, stick with us because we've got just over a lap and a half to go of this Autosport Teams Invitational where the winners will be going to the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final. <laughs> Aaron Choney can at least be happy for, for a moment or two and then it's back to, back to normal looking very nervous but to stay with us if you're around because this race is getting very interesting there's only 1.2 seconds between the top two the winner will go to the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final the winner the second place team will not so a huge amount at stake here and now in the tow I think it's fair to say Jota getting very very close Harry yeah I mean this is exactly what we want and what the audience wants to see now we're going to be down to a last lap shootout between you know, two big names in esports and now they're going to be competing for that you know, seat in the grand final later this year and say for Williams it's their only opportunity it's the only opportunity they've got and Jota are potentially going to steal it away from them even though Jota would have another opportunity themselves if they didn't win here today I mean put yourself in their position I'm sure you've been in similar positions how do you not start making loads of mistakes just from the nerves how do you stay composed under this kind of pressure well that's why I'm here and not in the rig anymore because <laughs> I couldn't but no it's, it's well, incredible what did you do wrong then? well everything apparently no it's um it's so difficult, you know, you, you, tr you, know, you practice so hard and then you think it comes down to fighting for a tenth a lap on lap 31 or 32 to make sure someone's not in the slipstream. It's crazy how in-depth these guys need to go to make sure they're at their peak performance. And say like one little mistake, one little kick at the rear could lose you two tenths and that's game one for the last lap. Well, the gap has just gone up to one and a half seconds, so uh, Williams are having a good sector and they've brought the gap back up to one and a half seconds. But here is on board with Jota, second place. That is the win just ahead of the Autosport Teams Invitational. As me and Harry said earlier, the winner is all that matters here. The rest is almost irrelevant and we've only got just over a lap to go. We're about to go on to the final lap of this two-hour endurance race. It's been very hectic to say the least. We've had uh, leaders going off. We've had a small instance as well, but that was definitely a mistake there from the Williams team and the Jota team are getting very even closer now. Are they close enough to pick up a toe and just drive by the Williams team down the Molsan straight? I wonder if you've just joined us, we're not using the chicanes either down the Molsan straight. It's a run all the way down to Molsan corner. So. Here we go then, Williams versus Jota. One lap to decide who is gonna take the win as they now come down to the four chicanes for the 31st time of 32 laps. We're looking back now from our leaders, Williams. Will they be in the lead next time we get to the four chicanes? Last lap now about to begin as they come across the line. Williams in the lead for the time being, but can Jota do anything about that? They're going to need nerves of steel to hold on for this last lap, the Williams guys. And obviously, Jota, they can't afford mistakes either. You know, we think they're in the best positions as of being behind. They can watch and you know, stalk the leaders, but they need to make sure they don't make any mistakes and drop out of the window of being able to make an, an overtake happen on this last lap. But it, we're talking the smallest of mistakes now could decide this race. Well, here we go then. We're about to come up to the Molsan straight, and it looked like a very good run from Jota for me. Williams, likewise. Uh, keeping it nice and tidy, no real mistakes on this last lap so far, but Jota definitely looked close enough to pick up a toe as we come up towards uh, Tetch Rouge now. Getting very excited on the Jota team, I think they reckon they're close enough to potentially have the run and try and have a go at this. Onto the Molsan straight we go, and now Williams can do nothing but wait as the Williams team approach the Jota team as well. And that is a very nervous looking Williams driver there looking on as we go down the Molsan straight. There's nothing they can do now, Harry. This must be terrible for them. They just have to wait and see if they've done enough to still be in the lead by the time they get down to the end of the Molsan straight. Jota, meanwhile, are just going to be hoping that their car finds some extra speed from somewhere as uh, they now head down the straight. This is it, final lap, and Jota closing in. 
this is the most frustrating part of the lap for these guys. Yeah. They'll be pushing that right pedal so hard that they'll probably end up snapping <laughs> off if they're not careful. You just want to eke every little, sort of, even half a mile an hour to just keep yourself a little bit further ahead than that car chasing you if you're the Williams car. But say they're in the slipstream range. I don't think they're quite close enough to obviously make a move into the hairpin coming up, but they've then got the rest of the lap, you know, the winding corners, the slow 90 degree corners to try and make a move. And that's when the car's obviously at its worst, if you will, in terms of you know, handling. So it's very difficult to control at the best of times, let alone when you've got to deal with these kind of pressures. It's eight tenths now, that is the gap, and look how much they're closing in under braking. Jota right with the Williams team now as they come out of Molsan Corner. We've got around half a lap remaining here now. Down towards Indianapolis we go. Jota, they're close enough to be putting the pressure on Williams, but they certainly aren't close enough to make a move just yet. But there is still time remaining in this. The Autosport team's invitational after two hours, it's come down to the final lap then and there we have uh, the Williams team leading from Jota into Indianapolis we go for the final time will there be a mistake from Williams will there be an ambitious lunge from Jota they're getting closer once again and now down to Arnage we go Williams just trying to do as much as they can to prevent Jota from closing in that's the Jota team you saw there with one of the Williams drivers as well pushing it to the absolute limit where Jota almost brushing the tyre barriers Porsche curves and the four chicanes now remaining. Can Jota get close enough through the Porsche curves to potentially line up a move into the four chicanes? I'm shaking for him. I wonder how they're feeling in the rigs. This is the Le Mans Esports Series super final place up for grabs in the team's invitational. Through the Porsche curves we go. Jota getting even closer. Williams, are they going to have to defend going into the four chicanes? I wonder. Jota getting very close now. It is getting seriously close. That was a mistake there from Williams, it looked like, as Jota close in once more. It's going to come down to the chicanes. It's going to come down to the final corner of the two hour endurance. And that's going to surely have to be now some defending going on from Williams. Jota are going to have to look to the outside here. Williams are going to have to go defensive. Jota are going to try and lunge down the inside, are they? Here they come, trying to lunge down the inside. And what's going Oh, no, big mistake. And that's a spin there from the Jota team. Williams are going to take the win. Williams across the line. Give them a round of applause, everyone. Williams win the Autosport team's invitational. It's their only chance to do it. And they're going to be going to the Land Esports Series Super Final. And Jota, heartbreak for them. But what an effort from the Jota team. Well done, Jacob Bokit. A round of applause for them as well. But can we have one more round of applause for all 12 teams completing the two-hour endurance? Thank you very much for joining us at the Motorsport Game Stage. Williams celebrate to our left, Harry. What a fantastic race that was. I mean, that lived up to its name, didn't it? We knew how big the prize was going to be, and they delivered a right performance to make sure it was worthy of it. I mean, what can you say about the Williams guys? They had so much pressure to hold on to that lead for the final stint with the Jota car coming from the last, no, last place and then coming through to fight for the lead. Just incredible. No, they really deserve it. You can see how much it means to them. They're over the moon. Well, we're going to hear from the Williams team, but if you're around us, the Motorsport Games activation area is just behind you. You could be at Le Mans racing against the Williams team. All you have to do is go into the Motorsport Games activation area where the Le Mans eSports rigs are. You can set a time there, and if you're in the top three at the end of the weekend, you will also be racing at the Le Mans eSports Series Super Final. I need to lie down, Harry. For now, we're going to go down to Louise Beckett, who is with the Williams eSports team. Thanks very much, Chris. Oh, guys, that was such a good race. Yeah, it was amazing. It went right down to the end. I can't believe it. You threw to Le Mans. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, Nico did a great job. We all did a great job, and I couldn't be happier. The pressure was really on you at the end. Yeah, it was. It was so nervous. Uh, I can't even say anything. Like, uh, there is a team uh, event, so it, it 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 was more stressful for me because you know uh, it's not in only individual uh, event, just just a team one. So I, I'm so stressed that I can. Can, can, can't even talk with you, so sorry. Understandably. Uh, well done. You can celebrate and get ready to go to Le Mans. Uh, so, as I say, they're going straight through to Le Mans in June. For all our other teams, they will be competing for the next round online on the 1st of February, and they'll be tackling the Silverstone circuit. But for now, from us at Autosport, it's goodbye.
Well, Harry, there we go. What a fantastic race that was. Williams Esports taking the win. That last corner, we said it was going to come down. <laughs> when I said it was going to come down to the last corner, I thought oh, maybe halfway through the last lap, if we were lucky as you know, neutrals. But uh, what an ending that was. I enjoyed that so much. No, that was such good racing from start to finish. And you know, what a story. We had Williams who had the mistake on the first lap, fought their way back to the lead, and Jota coming from the very back to take the fight to them on the last corner of the last lap after two hours. It's, it was crazy stuff, and they hats off to Williams, and obviously to Jota and everyone else who took part in that. They really drove so well on such a high level that they all deserve you know, a massive pat on the back from each other. You know, they should be very proud of what they've achieved, a lot of them. I think that said it perfectly. Before we close the show, uh, we do just want to remind you of uh, uh, a promotion that Thrustmaster have going on at the moment. If you've been watching this and think, you know what, I'd love a bit of go at some esports, and why wouldn't you? Uh, then we have a deal going on from Thrustmaster at the moment to get you started on exactly what you need. Uh, and maybe you can go to the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final. There is uh, events going on on Forza Motorsport 7. There is uh, the uh, deal that Thrustmaster are doing at the moment. It runs from the 9th to the 14th of January. You can see that promo code there. You use that and you get 10% off all of those things on screen. The wheel, the pedals and the uh, shifter as well. At Box.co.uk, that's where uh, you need to finish to get that gear stick. The uh, uh, wheel and the pedals as well until the 14th of January so make sure you do it uh, of course that's uh, our first pro team Harry that's qualified uh, six more will go through via the pro team series uh, which we have four rounds remaining of that as Louise said that continues on the 1st of February as for the pro-am teams of course the rivals events is how you can qualify uh, to compete in the pro-am teams not only that you can also get through via the autosport show here so here, if you're going to be here tomorrow and you've been tuning in today, come to the Motorsport Games activation area. It's right by the stage. Yeah, you go over to the Le Mans Esports Rigs uh, and then you can set a time there. You can have a couple of goes at it as well. Set a time and if you're in the top three uh, at the end of the weekend, then you're going to qualify for the Le Mans Esports Series Super Final. If you're watching around the world, then uh, qualifiers will also take place at the FIA World Endurance Championship Rounds. Uh, at Sebring uh, and at Spa as well. But that's all from me and Harry. Uh, we'll be back on the 1st of February for the second round of the Le Mans Esports Pro Team Series. Thank you very much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. If you say you didn't, then I, I don't know how much more I can give you. A last corner, last lap shootout is exactly what we asked for. But thank you very much for tuning in. Check out the Le Mans Esports Series site for more details. For now, though, for myself and Harry, it's goodbye.